Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to this evening's uh, Planning Application Committee. I am Councillor Jared Hargreaves and I'm one of the Vice Chairs of the Committee and I will be chairing our meeting this evening. To my left I have the councillors who will be sitting on this committee. They will hear the applications and make the decisions. And I'm joined across the table and by the side of me by officers from the Council, Planning Officers and Legal Officers who will be advising us on the applications this evening. So welcome to you all. We have a number of applications that have speakers, and I plan to take those applications first, and then we'll move on to the applications that do not have speakers. So the running order for tonight will be Cromwell Mansions, Adrian Muse, Roland Gardens, Notting Hill Gate, Albert House, and then we move to the application with no speakers, Colbeck Muse, Cromwell Road, Kensington Church Street, the Kensington Memorial Park application has been withdrawn. So we then go on to Clooney Mews, Hollywood Road, and Gunter Grove. Those are the, that's the order that I will take the applications in tonight. We have a lot of speakers, and I please ask the speakers to respect the three minutes or two minutes, however long you've got, so that we can get through the applications and give everybody a fair hearing. So thank you. I now move to the agenda. And do we have any apologies for absence? Any declaration of interest by the members? Yeah, thank you. Um, item number five, and zero zero two. I don't know the applicant quite well, but I have no discussion for it. Happy for yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. Any other applications relevant to tonight's meeting? Thank you. Can we now move to the minutes of the meeting held on the 7th of March for approval? Are you happy for me to sign those minutes as a true record? Yes. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you. So we now move on to the applications that are before us this evening. And the first application is for uh, Cromwell Mansions. 217 Cromwell Mansions. Who's going to present that to us? That's myself. Thank you very much. Evening, Chairman, evening, members. This is item S0043 in the agenda pack. This is uh, Cromwell Mansions, Cromwell Road, London SW50SD. To remind members, uh, there is a, an addendum that's been circulated uh, for this particular item. It concerns supplementary comments from a uh, particular local resident. Uh, in addition to the original objections, and that's set up in the agenda. Um, the application before you is for the erection of a single story where extension, sorry, single story roof extension to provide um, two number of three bedroom units with associated uh, amenity space, solar panels, bicycle parking, and refuge storage. Um, the first slide indicates the location of the application start outlined in red. Um, you can clearly see that it sits to the south side of Cromwell Road. To the rear, you do have uh, secondary, secondary residential um, um, properties as well as um, road by way of Redfield Lane and Walgrave Road further to the south. Um, it is um, an apartment block that comprises uh, approximately five storeys in height. It's a mansion block purpose built. And as you can see from the front and rear, area of views. It's contained within um, a, a mansion block either side. There are roof terraces and roof additions to which you can see um, in the um, bottom 
white, uh, we are intimate here in, in terms of any form of roof developments in the vicinity of the site. Um, turning to the existing site photos, uh, the main image shows you the site in question. Um, the, the site's obviously off Cromwell Road, the main entrance taken from um, adjacent to the, the bus stop. Um, you, got, you have further views of um, the existing flat roof nature of the, the existing block uh, as indicated by the series of the photographs along the bottom. And this is the main light well that's situated within the footprint of the building. Now moving to the existing and proposed floor plans. Um, on the left hand side, the existing arrangements of the mansion block. On the right hand side, it's worth noting that obviously as part of this proposal, they are creating two three bedroom units. So there is an expectation to provide additional cycle parking as well as bins. Um, the cycle parking is, is, is located within the existing light well with further two bins associated with the two units along the, the, the back edge of the site within the existing facilities. Um, moving on to the existing roof plans, um, on the right hand side, again, that gives you an indication of the, the amount of development to be created. Um, it's approximately 130 square meters uh, for either apartment block um, that sits either side of the core, uh, the core stairwell as well as the, uh, the main entrance of the, the main of the property. It is set back, back approximately at four meters of, from the, uh, the front elevation of the development site as well as sited approximately just over three meters from the rear. Existing and proposed front elevations. Um, on the right hand side, you get to appreciate the amount of development to be created. Um, it's worth noting here that these dormers were revised during the course of the application to align and be more sympathetic with the hierarchy and architectural order of the windows um, that sit that way beneath them. Also worth noting these chimneys and chimney stacks and pots will be um, reinstated and increased on top of the, the proposed roof form. Um, this, this particular slide just shows you a quick comparison of what's happened to this site. So this is not the first application to come forward on this um, particular um, um, location. There was two previous withdrawn applications for two and a three storey roof extension, but obviously um, there were significant design concerns. So those two applications were withdrawn. Um, for comparison, that's the current application to which we are considering tonight. Uh, back in 1986, there was a further um, roof addition that was consented. And that, as you can clearly make out there, it's more sympathetic in terms of its architectural approach and materials. Now, just quickly turning to the um, other elevations, this is the south elevation, which is the, the rear of the site. Um, as, as you can see, it's the same treatment um, to the front where you have a small opening, a smaller number of um, dormers with the, the roof chimney stacks and the, um, the equipment to be sited um, above the, the flat roof of the, the mansard roof extension. Um, turning to the proposed and existing east elevation, again, uh, it's very much the, the same treatment um, to the other elevations. And um, these are, this is a CGI that's been produced by the applicant's team. Um, this gives you um, a view of um, the, the roof addition with the, um, the quality of the materials that's been proposed, as well as the terraces that sits in front of the, the openings. So this particular CGI is taken from the, the back of the properties, um, which shows you the external amenity area, um, the, the window openings and dormers, as well as the, uh, the chimney um, alterations. And lastly, um, again, these were prepared by the applicant's team. These are key views of the existing proposed uh, roof addition um, showing um, how it's going to impact on the, the wider environment. Um, so this is taken from Cromwell Road. Um, what you can make out is these um, chimney stacks will, which will be extended. Um, because of the four meter setback from the front elevation, um, it's less noticeable from um, appreciating the, the actual roof form itself. Uh, this is taken now towards 
uh, one of the, the roads towards the rear of this site. This is Walgrave Road. Um, again, you can just make out that there is some form of development, but um, it is sited in a way to not um, be visually dominant um, at that roof level. Uh, finally, you've got one um, final key uh, view, which is taken from Redfield Lane. Um, I guess this, this view, you, you can um, see some form of development, but it has been designed to be set back with uh, a, a material, a palette and colour that is in keeping with the general conformity of the surrounding development, and therefore officers are um, satisfied that it's not going to have a significant impact upon the setting of the adjacent conservation area. There is um, a car-free development um, um, legal agreement which will have to be secured by way of any approval as part of um, this particular proposal. And that concludes the end of the presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. We do have some speakers for this application, so I'd now like to call to the table the objectors, which is Councillor Wade and Majamu Dilks, please. <laughs> Councillor Wade, you have two minutes, and Majamu, you have three minutes. Majamu goes first. Okay. Right. Thank you very much. Um, I will stop with your three minutes, yeah. sir. Great. Ready. Thank you. Okay, so councillors, we respectfully request that the committee refuse this planning application for three principal reasons. One, the council's most relevant policy, CLA, clearly instructs that the proposal should be resisted due to it unbalancing the building's architecture, not being sympathetic to the age and character of the buildings and having an intrusive impact on public view. And two, that the impact on daylight and sunlight has not been properly assessed against policy CL5. And number three, that the proposal will generate enormous unreasonable disruption to a large community over a prolonged period. So with regards to this proposal's contravention of the relevant policy CL8, this policy states that the council requires roof alterations and additional stories to be architecturally sympathetic to the age and character of the building or group of buildings. But the planning statement states that the proposal clearly reads as a later addition to the building. Policy also states that the council should resist additional stories and roof alterations if they would unbalance an architectural composition and or have an intrusive impact on the views from public spaces. And it's vital to stress that the applicant and the officer's report fails to acknowledge that the roof extension only covers half of Cromwell Mansions. So it's undeniable that it would imbalance Cromwell Mansions as a whole. And moreover, on view one and view three of the design and access statement, it shows the impact on the views to be intrusive from the south and the north, respectively, and the plans do not show a lift overrun. I don't know if that is an error. Um, and to reiterate, this visual impact would affect only half of common mentions. Um, the policy also states that the council should only permit additional stories when infilling gaps between existing roof extensions in order to reunite a terrace or group properties. And this is not the case for this proposal, as shown in the aerial photograph on page seven of the design and access statement. So the next point with the, regards to the light assessment, there'd also be an impact on daylight received by windows within the existing Cromwell mansions and to the rear. And while the application does acknowledge this, the design and access statement does not follow the correct methodology. And so it does not accurately reflect the impact of the proposed development. The officer report has relied on the applicant's own assessment, which is concerned. Um, and finally, but of serious community importance, the proposal will generate enormous disruption over a long period for a large community of neighbours within Cromwell Mansions, Redfield Mews, Redfield Lane, Walgrave Road, Kenway Road, and for the construction access point. This is not possible via Redfield Mews at the back, as it is private land owned by the owners of the numbers one to four Redfield Mews and the network of streets leading into Walgrave Road and Kenway Road is a one-way system with sharp, tight turns, and it's inadequate to support any large construction-related vehicles access. Um, it'll also be very disruptive by the front route, the Red Route loading bay on Cromwell Road, as it will limit the ability of Cromwell Mansion residents to park and use the vehicles. So regarding consultation, the public consultation was not undertaken in accordance with the council's statement of community involvement as well. That's thank you for your consideration. Mm. Okay, thank you. Okay, that's the way. Thank you. Uh, Cromwell Mansions were built as twin apartment blocks, each with 12 flats. 
her unique on Cromwell Road and deserve protection. These buildings are but Earls Court Village, a conservation area. The twin building has been, um, the one adjacent, is, has been converted into 30 <coughs> flats with no roof extension and do have habitable rooms which will be impacted. The interior of the applicant site is, is largely unchanged architecturally and retains many of its original features. I must challenge the recommendations in the officer's report that the proposals will preserve the character and appearance of the host building and contest that it would retain the good standard of living for existing residents. The construction logistics are simply unworkable with the con physical constraints with the road widths within the village and the road route close to a bus stop and junction. The implementation of this design will cover or kind of prevent, uh, include uh, parts of this central air well of Cromwell Mansions. This will result in loss of light, ventilation from there that are boiler banks, but also a loss of light to the twin building, particularly the top floors. There's also the potential of loss of light to the big news cottages behind. There's considerable in, in, issues around the CTMP with the limited access within the village and the loading bay at the front of the mansions, which is used for disability parking. I have concern about the, uh, the report back from TFL, which if you read it, is flawed where it says service plan has been provided, not provided, then draft logistics plans has not been provided and noted that it needs to be examined in detail given its unique location. Um, thank I would you very ask much. this application be turned down. Thank you very much. I would now like to ask the uh, agent of the applicant, Edward Norman, please. Thank you. I did keep 30 seconds longer to examine it, so I'm going to give 30 seconds more to you. Okay, thank you. Uh, firstly, very nice to see uh, we're also RMP spaceship there uh, from a few years ago. I hope that hasn't tainted the views uh, with this particular application. Uh, what I would like to say is that I have a few committee meetings um, online at the moment, and you have to ask the question, what do architects do? What do design teams do? What do consultants do? They take a client's brief, and they help them to navigate the nuances and the myriad of different legislative uh, thinking and papers, whether that's planning policy, whether it's building control, whether it's daylight and sunlight, whether it's impact on neighbours. And we put all of that into the melting pot and then we send in an application for consideration by the relevant council. Now, some councils you'll have more active members that may want to object, some you'll have less. It's always very good that you have objectors and you have people that are responsible and concerned for their local community, of course. Now, when we sent this application in, we were asked to make some modifications to uh, some dormer windows, but otherwise the scheme came back with a clean bill of health. And indeed, there were 31, I think, object, uh, objection comments, which were clearly, concisely responded to by uh, the Chief Officer, and were either shown to be materially irrelevant, not important, or inaccurate, or not correct. Now, there's other things which come into the realm of opinion. Things about, is it a balanced elevation? Is it a, is it, uh, is it a piece of architecture which is reflective of the history and conservation of the building? And does it sit well? Now, of course, as an architect, I believe that it does all of those things. And I think it is very well balanced. Of course, we're not in control of the neighbouring property. That would be absurd. We can only work to the scheme which we have been given. And it would be completely unacceptable to consider that just because an adjacent property hasn't been developed, that ours could not be considered. So when you bring all of this into the balance and you look at the recommendations in the report, which overwhelmingly state that there's no reason to refuse this application, what are you left with? You're left with planning law and you're left with planning policy. Why is planning policy important? Why is it useful? It's because it creates an equitable and level playing field for anyone that wants to make an application on the site so they can all be judged equally. What do you have without that policy? You have opinion. If we were to make consideration and make judgment on opinion, there would never be an agreement on anything. And so when we re review the report, review my comments, review all of the studies that we have done that have been accepted by uh, the, the officers in terms of the various criteria that we need to meet, they have all been met. And so I overwhelmingly state that this should obviously be 
uh, recommend it for approval. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now I give a chance for a group to say just a chance for members to ask questions of the speakers. The two of you want to join us again, please. Members, who would like to ask any questions of the speakers, please? Question. So, question for the applicant, um, the pink and on this slide, please. The, I'd just like to know a bit more about the material that's going to be used for the Mansard extension. I mean, I think in another photo, we saw the colour grey and they look like long, unbroken planks. Could you just speak a bit more yeah, about so the material? Well, so effectively, the proposal is overlapping standing thin zinc sheets interspersed with very faint glazing windows. And of course, it's a Mansard, so it's all angled back away from the principal elevation as well. Okay, and are, are there any other examples of big sheets on the buildings nearby? Uh, there, the there are, there must be hundreds of mansard roof extensions uh, throughout London that have been created using this particular form of materiality. There is also brickwork, of course, to match existing elsewhere, but fundamentally that's the, uh, the material. Thank you. Thank you. Um, one more question I had for the applicant again. Have we seen this um, application have 16 objections, no letters of support. Um, could, could you perhaps, I mean, why, why do you think that is? Did you try and consult? Did you try and gather support? Or what, what was the reason? Well, we did, we did consult and we did everything that we do for down to do by way of application. Now, obviously, we're in the RB, RBKC, we're adjacent to conservation areas, there are other residents in the building. Personally, whenever I, at any other time that I've worked in RBKC, I would be very surprised if there weren't an awful lot of uh, uh, comments and objections based on any application because it's the nature of the beast. And as I said earlier, you know, it's to be applauded that there are so many people that are interested in the preservation and the quality of the environment and their landscape. But it, it's something that I find uh, and have found on, on a number of different occasions on applications. Can you just tell us a bit more about the consultation that you conducted? Yeah, well, we informed all of the residents of our uh, proposals and our intentions and fulfilled all the criteria as requested in as part of our uh, duties under the planning uh, application. Uh, thank you. The question to the objectors first and then the applicant. Um, in your objections, you clearly said it's against CA policy 8. Um, Historically, we had many applications that had been granted, uh, which are in sync with the architecture thing. What do you think it, this is different to the, to the current, you know, the previous applications, or why is it? So why do we think it's still continuing? Because yeah. I still think it's only going to cover half of it. When you look at the building, it's only going to apply to half of it. And it's still not, it's going to stand out. It's going to won't sit well within the building, in our opinion. And I think there's enough detail on the planning that we've seen how it will work either to actually get it really up there. They, they were designed as twin buildings. The buildings afterwards can't really be referenced because I think they're bomb damage. So they were so you come to the they're actually particularly far in the, and if you ever have an opportunity to go into one of the buildings going because they're absolutely fabulous they've got the stone glass window and there's a real sense of this will be changed if you change one side of the of the of the of the mansion block you effectively make it uneven and at the moment both of the buildings sit so well alongside one another they are as a people as one piece when you look at them architecturally. So it's the fabric that you just added for one more. Uh, so essentially you're talking about the fabric. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's, it's a bit of placemaking. It's, it's a statement. It's an architectural statement. I think the architect who originally did it did a rather fine job. I think the architect did a good. But it's just they are of a piece when they stand there. In Cromwell Road, it is one of the one of the finer examples of mansion blocks that we probably would see in the borough. They are they they're far better than Kensington mansions. They're far better than Langham mansions. We may have some residents in those buildings. No, 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 no. I'm just saying, as as the layout, 
actually as the construction, the detailing on the, on, on, on the, on the balconies, the way the fenestration works. Everything about those two buildings works together. And at the back of the building, I think what hasn't been shown is really there's very little space between the back of the building and Redfield Lane oh, and Redfield Moves. And that is a that is something which I, I think that the uh, the committee should look at, especially when it comes to considering the construction. What if both buildings are in similar locations in the future? We can like. You see, that, that's, kind of, that? that's kind of yeah. that's you know it's great advantage to look at that. But I've been in the back of that looking at the buildings uh -huh. there, yeah. and yeah. actually you come out and it's only yeah. a couple of meters before you come into Redfield Mews, and so the uh, the whole construction delivery is going to be flawed beyond belief. I don't know how you're going to be able to do it from the front. I really don't know how you're going to do it from the back. You're going to be working on a, you have a crane, you're going to have to do it on a T-junction, Walgrave Road and Redfield Lane. You're going to have to take, get stuff over four houses into a constrained state. Thank you, that's my next question. How are you going to manage the construction? Because on Cromwell, Cromwell Road, I don't think there's a way that you can neatly, literally, do any sort of logistics. Well, there, is, there, are, there are lonely bays at the north of Cromwell Road. In fact, the building has just been scaffolded. I think it's scaffolded at the moment, and we've managed that perfectly reasonably. Uh, there is also access to the rear of the property as well. But I, look, I'm not here, I'm not here to right. communicate exactly how this, this piece of architecture is constructed. I'm here to discuss the material concerns around the specific planning application. Of course, we will have to provide a sophisticated, commensurate and sympathetic proposal for construction as a condition, which we would happily do so. And if it's deemed that it's not acceptable, then that's fair enough. But that's not, that's not for now. Thank you. Thank you. Just a quick question to the applicant. Um, objections in the one petition. Um, I understand that more or less you follow the normal standard procedure. So the poster outside the building and whoever wants to object goes to the mm -hmm. website and objections that. But why didn't you explore talking to neighbors and listen, we make appointment. How many people would like to turn up Sunday evening to church or somewhere like all the places around that? Listen to community, see the project actually has legs to stand up. So did you think about no, and, I, and to, to be honest, you know, I apologise if I haven't undertaken that piece of work. Um, and perhaps, you know, that's something that, that we could do in the future. But again, I don't believe that it materially affects the nature of this application. It's a recessed building. It can't be seen from the street. It doesn't impact the neighbours. And as per the, uh, the officer's report, every, every single objection and point has been clearly and concisely rebuffed and uh, shown to either be immaterial or irrelevant. And um, there was a slide which I sort of was drawn to. There was a slide showing the previous approval, um, <coughs> showing the roof. Um, so it was a history, the drawing, the drawing. So I think it was the beginning of the application. If you can take us that, just one question, which I think. Um, single story approved in 1986, right? So this was approved. Have you ever taken that into consideration to explore that way? Yes, absolutely. I think there were two approvals uh, in the 1980s by two different architects, uh, both slightly different in style, both approved for very reasonable reasons because of the quantum of development, the, the symmetry, the way the elevation has been proposed. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it, as a, in that long line and succession of architects that look at buildings, we have considered these schemes and we put, put forward what we believe is appropriate and relevant. Mm -hmm. and, and of course it is similar. <laughs> so question, last question to objectors. If, for instance, we decide to object or refuse the application, will you be keen to work together towards something which was approved in 1960, 1986 objectives. 
not quite oh, sure whether that's particularly <laughs> relevant to oh. this application. Okay. Okay. We've got a, we've got a, it's just matter of appearance. I want to just clarify: is it matter of appearance or truly? Is I can't respond to well, time because I, I think we, I don't think we can take that question really. You want to ask about appearance? Ask about appearance. We have to work with what we've got in front of us tonight. Um, so the question is: was going to respond to consultation. Well, that was about future consultation. What we have to do? Was, uh, it was one of the. Okay. Right. If you're asking, if you're answering something that came up before, please do. Yeah. It was before. Okay. When the previous applications came through, and there were there were discussions, there was an undertaking by the uh, uh, built applicant that he would consult, and that he would consult with the Earls Court uh, Planning Group, which he hasn't. Which hasn't happened. And um, I think that's probably why we've, we've got to this point because I think it's his, the consultation has been done to the latter, i.e., people within the building. But because this is, this is impacting on a conservation area, um, and, the, and it was mentioned, and he said, yes, yes, we'll do the consultation with the Earls Court. President, uh, you know, society planning group, um, because it is a very sensitive site. Yeah, so, no, that's uh, the uh, uh, not me. I mean, I'm, I'm just saying, I'm, I'm, no, sorry, I'm just saying that it is a sensitive site. Okay. That was something okay. that you said. <clears throat> Indeed. Any more questions? Just last question, so I reverse my question. If appearance of the property would be different, this extra extension, would you agree? Something in the line what was previously agreed and not put by the council. Thank you, but I still think there'll be issues with the other three points of the CL5 and the access point around the back and the front, but the back particularly. Um, I'd like to see it. I think we'd all like to be consulted on. We just, it was, it's not the middle of the Thank you more. Right. Thank you very much. Any more questions for the speaker? Thank you very much. We now have an opportunity for the members to uh, ask any questions of the officers, please. Of questions. First of all, correct that this is a Grade Two listed property. Um, no, so so this property is not listed. Doesn't fall within a designated conservation area, but there are separate conservation areas that sit north and south of the site, and therefore it would affect its setting as part of your consideration. Just because on on the map it says King Grade Two listed, and then the other buildings agree in. These buildings are, are pink, so this is just on the page. Right, the the map. yeah, I, I'm just a bit confused by that. No, it's if it's there's there's different um, layers, and if it was listed, it would be a true pink. But okay, this is not pink. natural. Okay, building. so just the color confusion. No, so I wanted to clarify that. My second question is: We heard the objectors talking about policy CL eight yes. and the balance of the two buildings. Now, I, I do accept your point that was made that they're not the same building but it is true is it not that they were built together as a pair um we are in a conservation area here how have you weighed the impact of the sort of current symmetrical buildings and how that will be disturbed through potential asymmetry is that a factor that you weighed up uh most definitely so there's a couple of points um to, to answer that particular question. So um, it is correct that the, the two pairs of uh, mansion blocks were built um, more or less at the same time. They exhibit the same sort of architectural language design, uh, which you can see um, there. Um, they're both flat roof, um, but at the same time, when we consider that particular policy, we are considering um, whether it's suitable for a roof extension on that particular um, host building, as well as how it's, it is designed, how it um, minimises harm to the surrounding conservation areas. And officers have assessed the application. They acknowledge that the, um, the roof condition has been significant setback, and that's demonstrated by the key views, which are shown in the later the presentation, that insofar as the, the, the amount of development is very minor when you stand at various points in and around from the front and rear of the site, and therefore it lessens that visible, visible harm standing at street level. Obviously, if you 
live in one of the properties directly opposite, you will have more of an outlook on that roof development. But what this um, particular area review also demonstrates is that there has been other forms of roof developments that has been consented um, in and around the site, most notably um, in this area. So it's quite common to have some form of roof development subject that is a good quality design, it's proportionate, it's not dominant, and it's respectful of its surroundings, including conservation areas, and therefore in and around offices are satisfied with the overall design and its impacts on the designated heritage asset. And at the same time, our, the council's conservation officers have reviewed the application as well. And they raised no objections subject to conditions. So they, they are looking at purely on the heritage point of view, whether it impacts on the designated adjacent conservation, of, um, conservation areas. And they come to the conclusion that um, there is no significant harm arising through this particular proposal, through the sensitive design, the sensitive setback, and the, um, the, the extension as a whole. So I just one final question, if I may. We, we saw the 1986 proposal. I wonder whether we could just go back to that on, on the slides. Um, just wondering um, to what extent, because that was approved, of course, to what extent, and it, it looks to me like a very nice design, um, to what extent officers took into account um, perhaps reasons why that was proved, say, in materials, or did you not take any of that into account? Um, and any historic consent are obviously material as part of any judgment and assessment. Um, you can clearly see that 1986 design roof addition is, is quite sensitive. It's almost replicating um, the, the design proportions, the materiality of what sits below it, almost like a, an extension, seamless yes. extension from ground to the um, finish. I think we need, the best to, I think we need yeah. to stop comparing with previous applications. We're, we've got this application in front of us and we need to, we need to determine this application. Um, any other okay. questions? Um, okay. <laughs> Just an extension to Councillor Lane's mm -hmm. question. So are you saying, based on your statement, this design would satisfy CLA policy even in a conservation area? Uh, yes, so, so as set out in the, uh, the committee report, officers have assessed this application against, not in design terms, but also the impact on the adjacent conservation areas and recognising that obviously it is in within a sensitive site and it, it is in an exposed location because they are public <laughs> use from the front of the site, Coral World as well as the, the rear and that and around as well as the, the adequate setbacks with the sympathetic designs, the alignment of the dormers and the man size because it slopes away. So that lessens the, the visual perception of the roof condition as well. So we are supportive of the application from the design point of view. One final question. Um, thank you. In terms of the CTMP, what if the council is not satisfied with proposal in the future, would that then be a condition or would that be...? So, so the construction traffic management plan, because this um, site fronts uh, a red route, which is Cromwell Road, it's a, a Transport for London maintained road, they've been consulted as part of this application. The, the applicant has produced a draft construction logistics plan in terms of imagine how they anticipate the development will be built because um, you can't have waiting vehicles um, yes. on the red route because of the, the, the bus stop and um, it seems to me that any form of construction will have to take place at the back of the, the site. I appreciate where local residents are coming from in terms of it's a highly constrained site, narrow, narrow um, new, um, roads etc, single lanes and uh, it be very difficult to undertake any form of construction but that needs to be factored in as part of the construction of vehicles, even the size, the timings of um, comes and goes, etc. All of those details will be laid out in the final construction traffic management plan, which is set out as part of one of the conditions in the pack. And um, Transport of London will be consulted as, as formally as part of those details to ensure that they are satisfied that the development can be carried out in a safe manner where <laughs> prejudices residents as well as highway uses of Cromwell um, World as well as the properties and roads behind it.
What if I'm satisfied? Well, if, what, what if, we could do is ask for that CTNP to come back to committee, to committee yeah. um, mm -hmm. particularly because of the nature the of the behind area. this building, which is which is behind this area, which is particularly tight. Sure. I'm, I'm take one more you. question to officers, and then they need to make a decision. Um, as Councillor Wake mentioned, there was a condition that any future development of this project needs to be consulted with the Association. How you as an officer would choose that condition? Is it just between developer and what was agreed before, or would you rather have some response? Have you actually spoke because it's a condition? So I just want to see your relation to the condition of developers to make sure that they consulted as for society in regards to conservation area. Um, we, we, the council does have a particular consultation um, document which encourages um, developers and applicants to do to, to consult and speak to their neighbours before submitting a formal planning application because they establish good uh, relationships and neighbours understand exactly what proposals will be submitted um, in the future. Um, but what we can't do is um, enforce that and, and make developers to um, to, un to undertake or go through that process. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it's more like a, a recommendation to, to to lessen, I guess, the number, reduce the number of objections we see for any controversial applications that we've identified. And sometimes uh, it's a standard um, text or wording that we include as part of any pre-application advice and also advice exactly um, identify potential residents group and uh, amenity groups to which um, the, the applicant can actively engage with the local community. So, so it's your opinion that the necessary con the, the, the consultation as laid down in the application can uh, has been met. Yeah. So there's a statutory duty for yeah. the local planning board to consult uh, or notify uh, local neighbours. Um, the the council has to fill that duty insofar as um, displaying site notices in the around sites and um, placing adverts in the local press as well as um, sending um, individual letters to properties in and around the site that are affected by the development and, th and therefore um, by, by undertaking this particular exercise it's a field of statutory requirements. And the last question, uh, despite the fact that the application was approved in 1986, do you think it's not fair, what, what is your feedback? Do you think it's not all the development of Victorian House? So, is, are you asking a question what my views on the design of the 1980s? No, we're not no, no, no. on the current design. The current design. design. Uh, my views on current design is this is very uh, much a common design rationale approach to rooftop mm -hmm. extension. Um, it, it's not trying to re replicate the 1986 design. Mm -hmm. It's more of a, a modern interpretation. Uh, a modern extension with the use of modern materials such as the aluminium cladding uh, and it gives the impression that um, it, it is um, in keeping with the general proportions, the line of the windows, a bit in a modern interpretation of architecture um, language. So okay. it works successfully. Thank you. So I'm now going to move to a vote. Would anybody like to comment before we, we take the vote? Um, thanks, Chairman. I think, uh, as, as I spoke about the CTM plan, I would love to have a condition on the CTM plan. Okay. So, if we, is, is it the wish of the committees that we put a, that add that in as a conditional uh, condition that the CTM plan has to come back to the committee? Not necessarily. I think, from my point of view, is as architect articulated himself, custom accounts, he does the plan, checks with the officer, and here we go. But actually, there are residents who will suffer living there. So, at the end of the day, we don't have TFL response, it's a red route. And is it actually feasible, plausible to well, do that? Well, that's what the CTM did, man. That shouldn't suggesting. be done before our committee. Well, that's not <laughs> part of the process. So I'm suggesting that one of the conditions, which is a standard condition that goes in with the CTMT 
plan has to be done. I'm suggesting that because of the sensitivity of this particular site, mm -hmm. that CTMT plan would have to come back before the committee. Normally, they don't come back before the committee, but I'm suggesting because of what the neighbours have said, if we grant this, that that CTMT plan should come back before the committee. I think that's wise. Yeah. Yeah. But we're not making decision now without seeing that because we're just... Well, that's not, that's, not what, that's not what normally happens. It is not a requirement it's not a requirement to submit the CTMT plan as part of the application. No, it's not. Our planning policy um, that relates to basements requires a CTMP at the planning application stage. A draft CTMP, but we don't have policies beyond basement applications that require a CTMP at the application stage. It is something that we condition regularly where construction may be particularly constrained and difficult with the size of the scheme. So there's no requirement to review that in draft application stage. Um, it would be reviewed under the condition application. So, the question is legal. Yeah. When it comes back to the committee, would the committee have a say on whether yes. or not? Yes, that's a reason for coming back. Yeah. So, um, under, under a condition application, uh, a condition, you have to submit an application to discharge that condition. So, they have to submit the construction traffic management plan, and the council has to make a decision on that. Um, whether to, to approve the CTMP they submit, so the committee would be making that decision. And it would come to a meeting of this committee? Yeah. Okay, so I'm now going to move to a vote. The recommendation is to grant planning permission on the satisfactory completion of an undertaking or agreement to secure the matter in section 7 of this report and with the conditions listed in section 9 of this report, or to refuse planning permission well, and to refuse planning permission if an undertaking or agreement to secure the car-free development in Section 7 of this report has not been satisfactorily completed. So, uh, would those in favour of the recommendation please indicate? Would those against the recommendation please indicate? And on what planning condition are you, what planning are you objecting, please? No, unless I don't see if this is plausible from TFL side. So I understand, but if I don't... Yeah, but what, what's the condition, what's the planning policy you're objecting to? I don't see that the condition can actually give me green light to approve it. Okay, fine. So three, four, it, this, uh, this application is approved. Thank you very much. Three, four, one again, this application is approved. Thank you. We now move on to application Adrian Muse. And who's going to present this to us? Again, I'm going to present this. So, this is agenda item S0822, Adrian Muse, um, in London SW109AE. Um, the proposal itself is the construction of a partial man side roof extension associated terrace, including a basement extension under the existing property with external parking. Uh, in addition to that, some alterations to the ground floor level and other associated um, alterations. So we can clearly see this is the application site. It sits uh, behind and to the west of Eiffel Road and um, to the right of um, Brompton's conservation, conservation area cemetery as well. Um, just turning to some area reviews. Um, it's outlined by the red marker here. It's currently a, a two-storey um, development that sits behind these um, established royal of properties. Um, what you can see here is um, the relationship or the close sort of nature of these uh, properties that sit adjacent to one another. Um, to access this property, there is a small undercroft that you access um, using vehicle and pedestrian access on Highfield Road. And um, on this right hand side, um, again, you can see the double developments that sits adjacent to it. This is um, the Iris um, Centre. This is the, the Brom, uh, Brompton Cemetery, as well as the conservation area that sits to the right hand side. Now, these, these are images that were taken from one of the local residents uh, from um, the property at 106 Arfield Road. Uh, this was taken from um, the lower level of their property, and this is the actual back of the, the application site. So the, the, the actual development would actually sit above that. 
uh, these are views uh, at more of an elevated um, level, I believe, um, on the terrace of the same site. This is looking to the right, and again, you can see some form of um, post um, mansard that's been constructed to this particular flat roof of the adjacent block. And this is a, another view of the, the relationship to that gable end um, development with obviously accommodation uh, within that roof form. Um, just, just turning to the existing and proposed elevations, um, it's worth noting here that uh, you can see um, the, 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 the development sits uh, and it's a lot lower than the, the, the taller neighbouring box that sits behind an Eiffel Road. Um, it is a single story roof addition with openings that look out onto Brompton um, Cemetery and as well as um, an external amenity um, area to the side. Um, these are uh, side elevations to, to also uh, pick up on the, the, the amount of um, development in terms of um, how deep they are uh, as part of this proposal. Um, it's slightly set away um, from the common boundary line of the, the rear of the properties um, that actually sit directly behind the actual application site. Um, this is a section um, of the um, roof addition. You can clearly see that it's been purposely designed with a slope nature. Um, that's in response to address any immediate concerns uh, as part of this um, proposal. Uh, and again, you can see the, uh, the basement that's been proposed, which officers have reviewed and found to be policy compliant. Um, just a, a roof plan of the mountain development looking top down. Um, you can see that it's been set back um, from the, the rear of these properties, which are residential. Um, you, to the right hand side, you get this outdoor in, external amenity space, and it also has been set off from this um, adjoining common boundary. Um, this, this was taken from the, the applicant's daylight sunlight assessment. Um, it's purely uh, shown on this particular image, so um, members can appreciate the, the distances and relationship as well as the, the sloped roof form, uh, because this has been subject to a couple of applications back in, the, in 2011 and 14, both of which were subject to appeal decisions, uh, where both appeal decisions found that the, the overall um, roof extension would have had a, a significant impact, uh, particularly to these properties uh, immediately to the rear. And turning to the, the last um, slide, um, these were the 2011 and 14 uh, refusals. What you can distinguish here is um, the, the amount of development on the roof were considerably um, um, more in terms of the, the width and the scale, uh, and therefore, um, despite um, having a slope roof, um, officers as well as the inspector in both appeal decisions concluded that it would amount to to significant loss of uh, immunity to the properties at the rear. And that concludes the presentation. Thank you. Thank you. And we did have some speakers for this, so I'd like to call upon Fay Wright and Nick Payne, uh, who are objectors to speak. We've got three minutes, which we're going to, to share. <laughs> I speak on behalf of Nick Payne, who lives at 106 Hiffield Road, the closest property to the proposed extension of 4A Dream News. I wish to make three key points in objections to the proposal. One, the proximity of the proposed mansard extension. Two, loss of privacy from the proposed roof terrace. And three, the need for additional floor space at roof level. Turning to point one, the proximity of the properties is expressed in the officer's report, but was also noted in relation to earlier iterations of the scheme, which were dismissed at by inspectors at appeal. The inspector described the properties as being at very close quarters, and that number four already restricts the outlook from the rear-facing windows of 104 to 108 Hiffield Road. Despite its reduction in scale, the proposed roof extension is still overbearing. There will be an increased sense of enclosure and a severely compromised loss of outlook, which will be harmful to the living conditions of my client's property. We feel it's important for councillors to visit surrounding properties to fully appreciate the damaging impact of the roof proposals upon living conditions. In terms of the proposed roof terrace, this is in such close proximity to its neighbours that there will be a harmful loss of privacy and the roof terrace should be for maintenance purposes only. And point three, need. 
My clients have no objection to the proposed basement extension, which extends across the footprint of the whole property. A basement is an appropriate way of creating additional floor space to provide a three-bedroom home without long-term detrimental impact upon surrounding properties. In summary, the roof extension is in such close proximity that the impact on living conditions will be harmful and we encourage members to visit the property prior to making a decision. Two, the roof terrace should be for maintenance purposes only to protect privacy. And three, the roof extension is not needed to create a three-bedroom home. And given the severity of harmful impact upon living conditions, we do not consider there's a need for this element, which provides space for a home office rather than an additional bedroom. Thank you. My name is Nicholas Payne. I'm here representing five families comprised of 18 persons at 104, 106, and 188 Highfield Road. The proposed development will deepen, darken, and further close in the four-story cavern, which you can see. We will all live around materially diminishing all our living conditions. The five families I represent all struggle daily to find openness, light, and space because of the neighborhood construction and cherish any outlook that we currently have. Our submitted photos illustrate how we will be irreversibly harmed by overlooks and an oppressive increase in our sense of enclosure within our shared cavern and a loss of privacy. To be very clear, we are not opposing the second major element of the proposed development, a full basement extension, and any other elements of the proposed of the proposal, including a very challenging construction plan. We, but we are unanimously uh, opposed to the upward roof extension. I was sitting here when the committee refused a similarly harmful roof, roof extension proposed in 2015. RBKC also refused in 2011. Consistently, the committee should refuse the roof extension today. A proposed roof extension housing a home office does not fundamentally serve RBKC's mandate to increase borough living space, but will cause great harm to five family living amenities. Thank you. Thank you. Can I now call upon Valentino Pagliosa and James Stewart, please. And you are going to share the three minutes. Yes. Did I give 15 seconds extra to the previous speaker? So you have 15 seconds extra. Yeah. Thank you. Who's going to start? So I will start representing uh, me and my wife. This, this is a presidential dwelling we present. Good evening, Chair and members of the committee. My wife, Kate, and I purchased the property in 2021. And given the recent arrival of our baby, we wish to sensitively extend, upgrade, and refurbish our family home. For the past year, we've been working together with your planning and highway officers through the pre-application process. We look at the previous refusal for an extension and made the revisions, creating a suitable scheme, which we are now pleased to see recommended for approval. The way we approach these has been radically different from the past. A daylight massive model was produced from the outset. We then asked the architect to design within it. We didn't design first, test the model and prepare supporting opinions. This is the reason why since pre-application, our plans have been supported by your officer as compliant with policy. To ensure we maintain good neighborly relationship through the building program and design, we have spent a significant amount of time proactively liaising with neighbors on the proposal. On the back of these meetings, we were very pleased to see 14 letters of support delivered. We feel it is nonetheless important to respond to everyone and wish to reiterate the following points. As noted by your officer, the proposal is fully compliant with the RE guidelines in terms of daylight sunlight. These tests are numerical, empirical and not subjective. The previous appeal scheme were built over a greater extent of the roof, taking up roughly 80% of their space whilst our proposal only takes less than 50%. The height of our proposed extension was actually reduced considerably after discussion with the neighbours. This was done in the spirit of good neighbourly relationship, notwithstanding our original design was already very compliant. The plan incorporates a sensitive planting scheme to enhance visual amenity and biodiversity. Precedent has been set with similar roof extension approved for all other houses in the Muse, despite such elevation being actually much closer to the neighbouring properties than our proposed slope roof. The objection just mentioned the close proximity, but this actually should be read in context. 
Our proposed elevation has now been set back so that only start upward, sloping upwards at about three meters. And the highest point will actually about be two and a half meters. Two point eight, but will actually be at five point eight meters from the properties. In summary, we have designed a scheme to ensure there are no impacts on surrounding residents and have altered our scheme to address comments made. I would urge you to approve this application in line with the recommendation made by your planning and concept. My wife, my design team, Maria, and I are here to answer any question you may have. And I'm here to support Valentino and Katie in their application because I have quite a few friends as well. I've been there 27 years in Ipswich Road and I've been through every single one of those people who were mentioned. I've been through all their building works. I've never opposed once and I've been through hell with all the exemptions going on around me. So I support Nick. One, I support Valentino 100%. You can go ahead with this extension, definitely. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Now I'd like to um, I guess please answer the speakers. Okay. Oh, yeah. should, should we have the other speakers yeah. as well, yeah. Chair? Oh. All the same. Time for the, the um, councillors to ask questions to the speakers. <laughs> in terms of materials, what materials are you planning to use on the mansard? Absolutely. So, as we said, we went through pre application and follow up pre application advice. This is actually something that was changed as part of your officer recommendation. We originally considered something more modern based on the simple use of zinc. And actually, the advice that was received by the office and our conservation officer, which I obviously are hearing with, is to use slate, which will blend in. It'll be identical to the other uh, elevation you will see on the left, which is number five, and the one you will see on the numbers, uh, on number 1A, sorry, 4A, that is the studio. That is also supported us. Okay, so that's a, that's a real help. Thanks. So, could you go back to that sun? Some the daylight model. The daylight model, yes, sir. That's that correct. Yeah. It is your. In terms of the design, is one of your windows facing towards the, the rear or people? No. The rear? So there will not be any windows facing the rear. Right. There is only one window facing the studio, and the condition recommended. But as part of the recommendation for approval, is that the windows will be glazed. So, absolutely fine. So, a counter question to the objector. If there's no, I know you raised the question about privacy on that. If there's no rear window where you potentially couldn't see you from behind, I don't see why. The, the proposal is for a roof terrace. Yes. Okay, to, to the right. And that roof terrace is uh, you know, less than two meters away. Yeah, because you submitted that that would invade your privacy based on your, your thing. If there's no windows, I don't know how... We're talking about the terrace, I'm talking yeah. about the terrace. So there are concerns in oh, respect to privacy terrace. related to the roof terrace and use of the roof terrace given the proximity of that to the rear. It's not the impact, right. no loss of privacy from the mansard structure, structure yeah. itself. It's the use of the roof terrace and right. having people there in close proximity to the rear windows along the field road. And the distance is about 5.8 meters, one, correct? What From the rear that? terrace to your... To the, to the highest point, the of, highest the, point of, the, of the roof. So that's what we're talking about. The difference between the roof terrace and the building And the building behind. No, it cannot be five no, meters. No, 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 not from the terrace. We're just, please, we're just asking the others. I, I don't know what that measurement precisely is. I would estimate the uh, one part of the back of our house, a wall, and the roof terrace to be less than two meters. Okay. Do you I know the answer to that? Yes. So, so the answer to that is that while to the wall would be 2.1 2 meters, I believe, the reason why we've been talking, and that's what is covered in the report, that address the sort of element of the enclosure and daylight. Where you will see it starting sloping away, so where you will see it goes. Yeah, yeah, we're just talking about the roof terrace. Yes, now. and the reality is that the roof terrace, the main part of the roof terrace, you will see, will be phased. Is the part that is actually the square at the front, 
So maybe uh, if we, yes, that's perfect. That would be the really the usable and habitable part of the reflex. So, the, the, okay. the, so it's very far, I, it's quite far off the property of 106, I think. The point that- I, I disagree with that proposition. Okay, well, what's a rough estimate from, from the landing where you it's stay? Three, three meters. This is not a conversation, these are questions to be answered. Mm -hmm. What is your question, Councillor? Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll find it. Yeah. Thank you. So can you clarify for me the use of the roof terrace? The bit where people will be on and enjoying themselves is the wall leading. Correct. So if there was a condition to say, which is what the objectors requested, that the bit towards the, the, the back between the two walls is the maintenance only, you would, you Absolutely, would. like anything else, we would continue to comply with any of the other I think that needs to be clearly annotated on the plan, the model of the roof plans were clear in their subdivision of the use of that roof terrace. Well, well, they were in the plans, they're not, they're not, but that's what I'm saying, we condition yeah. it, so the, the, oh. yeah, the bit at the rear facing the other building is for maintenance only, mm -hmm. and the party goes on in that wall bit. Okay? I, I think this diagram is excellent at showing the corner of the yeah. walkable roof deck is a green uh, vegetation around it. Mm -hmm. And and our we have a deck one half a story down, it's a little square. Like they are absolutely adjacent. The corner of the terrace and the deck, our property deck is linearly less than half a meter. Can you go back to the, the previous slide, please? Yes. So, so we're clear. So we're on. Where the walled in bit of the roof terrace is, that is the social bit. As we are looking at it now, a bit between that wall and the back wall, to the right will be for maintenance only. That's, that's correct. From our, and that's that what we have to do into it. That needs, I, I think the plan, I, mean, I think that plan doesn't quite reflect that because the plan shows a very narrow area of planting. It doesn't show, as suggested on that sunlight and daylight image, that there's perhaps a third of that roof terrace that's um, shouldn't be accessible. Someone standing on that terrace would be looking right down through a glass door into my laundry room. Okay? Behind the terrace is 108. I am 106 next door. Help me out on this. <laughs> um, so, as, as, I, as I understand it, there's, there's a concern over the lack of clarity of this plan as opposed to the uh, specific understanding that if the area within the uh, green hedging should be defined roof terrace. That's what we want clarity about. Now, if members are particularly concerned um, that there is a lack of clarity about the space that would be used as a roof terrace, then they can add a further condition that clarifies um, uh, the use of, for instance, where it says roof light over stairwell. Um, it's, as you said, Chairman, the maintenance, access to maintenance only and not to be used as a roof terrace. So it's not untypical for us to have conditions precluding either whole roofs or parts of roofs. Um, now, the alternative um, that I, I personally do not think is necessary, and, and my advice to members is not necessary on, on the plans, is that there could be a condition to require them to submit an updated plan to clearly more clearly indicate the area of roof terrace. Um, now that's not to change it, but to provide a plan, a, a plan to, to more clearly indicate it. I think it's clearly indicated in the drawings and it's not necessary to do that. Okay, thank you. Any more questions of the speakers, please? I just would like to have some clarification. This is your photo, so I want to know. Um, the problem I have with that with blue structure by is it doesn't show me literally from the front. So I am a little bit confused what actually I see. If this extension go ahead, is your house higher or you will be in the same in the same level? Will your view of the cemetery be obstructed in any way? Yes. So value of your property but, will go down because yes. of the yeah. one, one uh, you know, so at the level of the roof line we have one story with windows looking out. The 
upward roof extension will block that floor's window. Mm -hmm. We do have another floor, mm -hmm. higher, mm -hmm. which will be unaffected other than um, you know, below a direct sight line. So even though this will go ahead, you will still have a view over cemetery. From the top floor. From the top floor, but you will lose the view from a lot. Yeah, and we will be darkened and, and, and enclosed on the floor. Because of the space here. Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to take the seat and now give the chance to the members to ask officers any questions they wish to ask. Thank you. Yes. As you said, I didn't have a chance to ask how many bedrooms it will be in total other people property will a development of this type of conditions. Uh, so my understanding is to correct me, uh, we are gaining here through development of the basement three bedrooms, right? Um, well, the, the purpose of the, the application is to provide additional accommodation for great families. The applicant explained mm -hmm. they just had a baby, so they need um, the only purchases property a few years ago, so therefore it needs to cater not just for the short but the long term as well. So it is essentially to create more living space for great family. So, how much space do we get by development in the basement? Um, I, I don't know, top of my head, in terms of square meters, but there is a, a floor that directly for the, the, the existing site is within the confines or demise of the existing building. So essentially providing the additional floor in the basement. In addition to that, they are proposing a roof addition. I just want to say in the basement, how many little units will be having in the basement for growing fun? Two bedrooms, one bedroom? Um, I'm just going to refer to the joint pack. Okay, thank you, you have a plan, there is a plan in the pack. Uh, perhaps I can clarify that the basement is shown as um, containing a, uh, a media room, a utility room, a shower, and a plant room. In, in, in terms of the number of bedrooms, I can clearly see on the proposed third floor plan there are three separate um, double bedrooms. So it would be a so three bedroom. Extra for grown family. So my another question is, if we have this property possibly be in Victorian era, is it in conservation? It is within the conservation. Because from the cemetery is. Uh, my question is, would you as the officer not suggest to the pre-application stage that since you develop basement, it would be not advisable to do green roof in regards to sites? Because we have policy when you develop something, you have to contribute towards the air quality. And I cannot see really much going on here. So instead of extending the roof, I would just suggest to the south because you gain space underneath. So obviously, you need to grow a family and fulfill quite generously. In exchange, just give us a green roof, particularly in Oxford area where politics not particularly, as you know. Also. Uh, you Would you not suggest that in a pre-application? We, we definitely uh, promote the use of SUD as part of any formal development in line with our local plan policy CE2, um, which requires a 50% betterment of over existing um, runoff rates. Um, it, this particular application has been subject to pre-application and we would advise them on that. There is a, a short paragraph set out in the committee report under 6.1, which refers to studs. And uh, it has been acknowledged that, obviously, given the constraints of the site, as well as what's been proposed, um, it would be very difficult to fully implement uh, uh, or brace uh, the use of studs. Um, notwithstanding that, obviously, there's certain types of development, such as the introduction of green roofs, which you can incorporate as part of any um, flat roof. Uh, as proposed, whether it be a flat roof extension or the, the flat roof section of a, a roof, for example. Um, but overall, we, we feel that there are limited opportunities there on this side, given the constraints as well as, as, well as what's been proposed to, to um, adopt a fully sites compliant um, development. And on balance, we feel this is the best it can achieve on this site. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Thank you. Okay, so I'm now going to ask, going to move to a vote. Would anybody like to make a comment before we move to a vote? Okay, so it is recommended that the committee grants planning permission with the condition listed in section A, and we've also added a bit about the use of that part of the roof. Yeah, beyond yeah, maintenance. Yeah, yeah, beyond maintenance. Okay. Uh, Those in favour of the recommendation, please indicate. Would those against the uh, recommendation, please indicate? And what is your policy that you are objecting well, to? Well, our policy is that if we develop the basement, we introduce sounds, and if we go out to make the roof and or managing only. Okay, the so it's so it's 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 the service policy. Yeah. Thank you. In that case, then, that application is granted. We now move on to Roland Gardens, please. Who is going to present this? Do you want to present it again? Thank you. Please. Okay, next item here, 33 to 39 Rolling Gardens, agenda item SO41. Um, the proposal itself is for a number of alterations, including a disabled access lift on pavement to entrance, uh, replacement of windows at ground and um, basement levels, um, external terrace with pagodas around the courtyard level, new, new stairs, courtyard entrance. Um, in addition to that, there is uh, light, lighting proposals. Um, existing AC units to be replaced, uh, as well as um, modifications to uh, previous 2022 consent. So this is the subject site. It's on a corner of Woden Gardens and Priory Walk. Um, it does consist of an existing um, building, a row of properties, which is known as the uh, Blake's Hotel. So the, the, the actual use is a um, hotel. There is uh, a, a muse. Uh, which form part of, of the site, and that's also um, part of the hotel following the grants of a, a previous planning consent. Um, just some area of use of the application site, as indicated by the marker, you can clearly distinguish the, the hotel um, in terms of its uh, coloration uh, um, um, from the, the adjacent uh, residential properties, but you do have um, residential properties that sit behind as well as um, to the right of that image. And this is the reverse view uh, with those news um, type properties that actually sit directly behind the hotel. Uh, just moving on to existing views. These, these were taken from one of the neighboring properties themselves. Uh, this, this is the back of one of those property, I believe on Golden Way. Um, and this is um, the actual outward um, appearance of the uh, from, from that particular garden looking deep into the site you can clearly see that um, this scaffolding that's been erected around the hotel that's because it's gained planning approval for 2022 um, consent for a new building extension as well as uh, a mansard and this is um, looking down um, from that particular view um, moving on to existing proposed lower ground floor, um, it's very minor in terms of what's been proposed there, but it's worth noting that uh, the windows at this level will be replaced uh, with new sort of surface materials um, within this particular area, and at the same time there will be a new passenger lift in the bottom right hand corner. Um, turning to the existing and um, proposed ground floors, um, again, um, the windows to the front of the, the building will be replaced in addition to the ones along the secondary road. Um, this third cage structure will be replaced and restored to the same proportions and height. And what you can see within this particular courtyard uh, plan would be the, the pergolas that would be sited um, at the ground floor level. Uh, existing and proposed first floor, again, this is um, very, very much about the, the courtyard um, interventions that has been, been proposed. It's well, also worth noting that the, the plans were amended during the course of the applications to reduce 
um, the amount of development as well as the height of the, the structures um, following consultation with local residents as well as concerns expressed by those individuals. Um, just turning to the existing proposed front elevation, again, um, you can clearly see that um, in terms of the front uh, manifestations, they're quite limited in terms of the uh, window replacement plus um, the other associated works with the passenger lift um, to the front of the hotel. Uh, moving on to the existing proposed square elevation, um, so this infill extension was consented back in 2022. And so uh, they are proposing uh, the enlargement of this particular terrace, which um, incidentally had consent of the previous of the previous permission. And there's further alterations to the rear dormers along the, the mansard of that particular roof extension. Um, again, this is to show you um, the consented scheme and what's before you. Um, regarding the, the work. So you can clearly see there were six dormers along the, um, those two particular properties. There would be slightly amalgamated, create slight, slightly larger dormers and to create a pair of dormers on either side. The external terrace would be slightly enlarged as well as uh, a further uh, um, introduction of some more, more external immunity space. <laughs> Um, we also have some courtyard west sections here. Um, it's also worth noting on this particular image that there is an existing um, trellis that sits along that courtyard elevation, and um, there will be new boundary treatment, but you can clearly see it will be no higher, if not slightly lower than um, the current existing situation. Um, again, some further um, courtyard elevation of um, what's being proposed and um, these are more detailed plans that the bird cage I was referring to this is the um, the trellis of the proposed um, courtyard elevation and these are existing and proposed sections of um, the amount of development um, this is the courtyard um, between the, mu the muse as well as the the existing hotel building and these are the end uh, terraces that sit uh, on the upper floors of the building and that terminates the end of the presentation. Thank you. We do have some speakers for this. So I'd now like to call upon Stephen and Tracy Gardner uh, to speak, please. And you've got three minutes. You're doing it on your own. I'm over. So you've got three minutes, sir. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good evening. I'm the uh, owner of 37 Northern Way, which, as you can see from the drawings, is uh, largely surrounded by the hotel, particularly on the courtyard. Uh, to the uh, to the south. Uh, I'd like to comment on the planning officer's report uh, as follows. Uh, living conditions, box two, paragraph seven. Direct sunlight flows to the rear of the houses in Rose Way and our patio. Victor Brewing spring water through the skyline gap between the hotel building and one and 47 Rowing Gardens. I above the proposed secret garden and not by the elevation of the new Mansell. Three elements of the courtyard design will interfere and block our skyscape light and sunlight. One, increasing the height of the existing fencing to the top of our gutter. Um, however, we are happy to for it to be increased to 200 metres uh, above the top frame of our patio doors on the basis there is no aesthetic beam running above. Two, the aesthetic beam shown in drawing PL20 as a box 2025 thick running at the level of the and three, the pergola, which is stated in the report to be at lower ground floor level underneath the existing wall. It is not. Drawing PL35 Red 4, courtyard hall shows a hotel courtyard is half a story above the ground floor of the news houses in London Way, which are at a lower level. The pergola closest to us is only three feet or so from the boundary, and the tower above us by almost 4.5 metres, almost the height of a double decker bus. The combination of the overly tall pergola, aesthetic being an increased fence height, will together increase our sense of enclosure and adversely impact on the direct light and sunlight to our problem. A lower pergola with fewer and non overselling cross beams or glass infill to avoid disturbance from heavy rainfall at night would be more acceptable. Noise, box one, parent two. The proposed condition regarding plant noise does not include the specific reference to our home and its patio. 
as a noise measuring point, as contained in the current plan version, PP 16046809. This wording was insisted upon in the 2016 Planning Committee Chairman, witness the garden was from our home. The fact that our home is particularly noise vulnerable is supported by our acoustic experts RBA report dated October 2022, which shows our home to be six decibels more noise sensitive than those properties cited in the Scotch Department. We understand that the history of non-compliance or any noise reports submitted by RBA were not taken into account when proposing the standard noise condition. We therefore ask that the 2016 special conditions regarding noise be repeated on any future plan conditions, together with the 2016 standard condition regarding odour, which has also been omitted. Whilst the hotel proposal will hopefully rectify the historic breach, if this is not the case, we should have the protection provided by the existing special condition. Lastly, windows, the request for the glass roof light to be non-opening relates to the basement roof light, which will be at our head height, immediately behind our patio, not the roof mounts or windows which the planning officer refers to. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Could I now ask uh, Andrew Greek, please? Yes, yeah, so you have three minutes to uh, submit it. Thanks very much. Uh, good evening. Um, uh, the, the whole hotel um, has, has had historic problems with um, noise uh, overlooking the, the neighbours. Um, we've acknowledged that architecturally, that the hotel is under new ownership. Um, it's been fully refurbished internally. Um, and um, we have been asked to sort of architecturally upgrade the external environment of the hotel. Um, Mr. Gardner has been referring to sort of very specific series of conditions that impact on his uh, property in the top right hand corner. Uh, but of course, the whole scheme impacts on, on the full curtilage of, of, of property. Um, we, we've consulted with um, all the neighbours. We've done a letter drop. Uh, we, we had a, a, a presentation to all the neighbours um, in November. Uh, we had attendance of about um, uh, 30 uh, neighbours, uh, most of which were uh, asking questions about the scheme and generally supportive of, of the scheme of proposals. Um, we, we have had two meetings with Mr and Mrs Garden specifically to address their uh, concerns, which we acknowledge. Um, we, we, we fully acknowledge that we're trying to balance quite a difficult situation where uh, the only external amenity space for the hotel uh, is the courtyard uh, at the back. Um, we understand that in the past there's been uh, problems with overlooking uh, from both uh, the hotel rooms and courtyards um, uh, balconies on the back of hotel rooms. And we also occupation the courtyard um, uh, specifically to keep the light and maximise the light into uh, Mr. Mrs. Gardner's sort of sunken light. Uh, there is a, at the moment a very low trellis, but unfortunately guests in the hotel can, can look over that trellis. So uh, from our point of view, architecturally it's a balance. Um, obviously, to raise that trellis, um, we cut the light down, but obviously we then solve the overlooking problem. So, uh, hence our two meetings that we've had with Mr. Mrs. Gardner to try and achieve a, a balance. Um, I think you could hear from, from Mr. Gardner that he is talking about very specific uh, elements and widths of beams. Um, uh, unfortunately, sort of beams need to be the size they sort of kind of need to be. Um, we're, we're, we're certainly not trying to do anything that's imposing uh, on, on their immunity. Uh, in fact, we've taken two staircases away uh, that adjacently impact on um, Mr. Mrs. Gardner's property. Uh, we have um, discussed with them the scale of uh, what was become a disabled a terrace, which was one of the rooms overlooking uh, their, their courtyard in the disabled room. Uh, we've negotiated that that needs to be reduced, and we're happy to reduce that, but there's a minimum required for, for a wheelchair to use that. Um, uh, the pergola is actually a very lightweight open timber structure, but it does give us some uh, protection for guests to move from the news across the courtyard into, um, uh, into the main hotel. Um, I, I think in, in a nutshell, they're the sort of key points. Um, we, we, we fully address the, the concerns about plant. We, we have had an acoustic engineer report on it. The environmental health officers reviewed that and he's found it acceptable. Um, so I, you know, I feel most of the news we've done have been positive and as proactive mm -hmm. as we can be. Thank you very much indeed. Do you want to remain there, sir? Do you want to join us again um, to give the members a chance to ask questions and speak? Members of the committee, would you uh, have the name? Thank you. 
and Jen, and the question for the objector, and then perhaps the follow-up. You mentioned special condition regarding lawyers, and a separate special condition regarding over. Can you just go into some further detail on those to explain it what you mean by that? Uh, yes, there was a time when there was a plan that was being sought for the reciting of the four shillers of the new over, which had been wrong with the size of it, and down like that. And um, they have been very noisy, um, ramping up and down. And before the, on the day of the, uh, the planning application meeting, the planning committee meeting, the chairman of the planning committee came out and it was first hand, the noise. And I think it was fair to say it was pretty, pretty aghast. As a result of that, a special condition was added to the noise standard, the council's standard noise condition which basically said that the readings could be taken from the facade of our property, 37 Burton Road. And if you look at the 16, 2016 Planning Commission, it actually refers specifically to that, the noise that the, the standard noise that shall be measured from 37 Burton Road, the facade, because it's acknowledged that basically it's the most sensitive property. And the point I'd like to make is that in terms of uh, the hotel's uh, acoustic report, the readings have been taken from Roman Gardens, not from Roman Way. I mean, Roman Way is a quiet, but the noise levels are significantly lower than Roman Gardens, which is you know, a large road, large properties. Um, and therefore, it's very important that the readings should refer to Roman Way. Because it's completely different. You can hear a pin drop. Thank you very much. And just a quick follow up for the applicant. Would that be something you'd be willing to consider altering the noise condition? Well, I mean, what I just mentioned is, is that the, the previous um, application that Mr. Bob's referring to, the, the, the roof plant is sitting on the roof and being exposed. And this application puts all that plant within, within the plant room and within acoustic attenuated enclosures. So the situation is now incredibly different. Um, and, and we have our acoustic engineer support has, has um, checked at the acoustic uh, louvers that you can see. That we, so if you, if you look at the right hand side, um, at the, the top right, there's a little pair of louvers there and there. If you look the, the, on the left hand side, you can see the four bits of plumbing. At the moment, they're, they're, they're completely exposed external bits of, of um, air conditioning equipment. I fully appreciate that they're, they're, they're far too noisy, which is why we've enclosed them. Uh, which is why we, we've got proper acoustic attenuated lenders designed, uh, and they will comply with, with the um, council's policy of noise levels, as, as the um, officer's report was, was required that we do, and the environmental health is to the degree that we will be achieving. So um, I'm not quite sure why we need to go and have the test done um, again when we're proposing a solution that would be compliant with policy. But if, if you're saying that, the putting back in the, putting in the 2006 conditional noise wouldn't affect you. It'd be good, it'd be a belt and braces for the, the objector. It's, it's all very well what the applicants are saying. Can I if they don't meet the yeah, test. Right. <laughs> yeah. So you're not going to lose out because you're saying you've covered it. The objectors are going to feel confident. So the, it's, that's a win win, isn't it, in a way? Yeah, yeah. We haven't got something we can go back to. <laughs> Any more questions for the, the speakers? Can I ask you, the pergola, you mentioned quite a bit about the pergola, it does seem quite a, quite a chunky piece of, of, of architecture. Could I ask the, uh, the um, applicant to just describe and talk through the pergola for us, please? Uh, yes, maybe we can see it on one of the drawings. Yes. Uh, you'll see it best on drawing 39. Well, oh, you can see it there. Okay. Um, oh, sorry. I'll go back. It's, that's just the plan for. That's looking down, isn't it? So, so, so looking down. The courtyard elevation. Yes, so there you can see it. Um, it's got the bubble around it. <laughs> okay. um, Okay, there, there, there we go. Yeah. So, can you see the staircase uh, that, that heads oh, up with this little metal? Um, exactly there. Yeah. Um, so that that's the pergola there. Um, it it just covers that route from the back of the hotel to that staircase uh, to take you into the Muse building, 
uh, and it, 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 it's um, it's about 2.4 meters high. Um, it's set back uh, about two meters uh, from the balcony. Uh, we reduced it in scale so that it matches the height of the the, the, the trellis to the left-hand side, which we've also reduced from what's existing. Um, and if you do sit in um, the, the far side of the gardens, um, courtyard, yes, you will see it. Uh, if you move over to the left-hand side, it will be blocked by the, uh, the, the, the trellis that's actually on the boundary. Uh, and it's open. Um, it's it's uh, about 50 by 100 choice, open choice, at about 500 centres, uh, with an edge beam, obviously, to support it. Support. Thank you. I just have a question. Um, one of the objectives, uh, number 47, mentioned here in 44, um, it sounds very worried about when you propose gardens in the uh, lighthouse on the south side of the country, Caltrade, because A, the possible noise, something about A, especially like their feelings, the people in soft proximity of the house was women. And B, this is something which is my question. There is a proposed new trailers which will, will be positioned directly in front of my kids' bedroom window at a very close distance, three feet. This will curtain the light to the window, but also raise the issue of privacy of the people on the terrace will be able to peek into my house on very close range. Right now, the window has not restricted whatsoever in the view. Restrictions of so can you just shine some light about this point here, point B, where is a proposed new trailers? Because obviously objector is worried about risk of light, privacy, and it's just outside his child bedroom. Yeah, if, if I'm correct, that refers to uh, the, the trellis on top of the left hand side uh, single story building. Um, which I can't point to, um, if you look no, no, the, the previous drawing was, was probably the right one. Um, can, can you see the... I'm sorry. You just keep it still. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you can see the single story building on the left hand side, uh, that's an existing hotel room. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at the, the, the equivalent on the right hand side, oh. you can see that single story building has mm -hmm. got a little staircase in it. Um, that staircase takes you up onto the roof of that um, of that um, single story building. Mm -hmm. um, and previously, the, the, the trellis, which you can just just see the left hand side of those two windows, um, was was a little bit close to the courtyard, which enabled people to get to look just peek around the back of, of the building number forty seven. But we met with the neighbours and we've moved that trellis oh, further back. Okay. So there's an, absolutely no chance now that anyone can look round the back. Okay, so we saw it about that issue. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very much. Thank, you. Thank you. Now I'll give the give a chance to ask the officer any questions. Um, I'm sorry, I thought you were. I know. I know. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lamb. Just a question in relation to the total size of terrace space. I know that in one of the objections it says it's 50% more than previously. Um, yet in your response to the comments on noise, you say due to the size of the approved terrace, the larger terrace would not increase noise disturbance to a level that would warrant a reason for refusal. How can you just clarify based on the current um, the current area of the terrace? To what percentage will it be increased to were this application to be included? Is it 50%? Is it less? Or is it more? I, top of my head, I wouldn't know the actual percentage, but what I do know is um, there was consent for that um, terrace as part of the 2022 application. This application seeks a modification to that application, including that terrace, which also includes uh, an enlargement to that. Officers have considered the, um, the new and large terrace as set out in the report to which we just quoted. We don't feel that it's, it gives rise to a significant overlooking effect because of the 2022 consent. So it's, there, there will be a degree of uh, overlooking, but not to a significant level that we consider to be unacceptable. And just one quick further question, by Mr. Chairman. We, we heard about the special conditions before regarding lawyers and odour. Is that something potentially just to reassure the objector that officers could add that in 
um, as a good condition? Um, personally, I've not actually had sight of that particular condition. I think it relates to one of the early consent, I think maybe the 2018 commission, because that also involved uh, air conditioning units, etc. Martin, you, you, you're Yeah, I, I can just clarify the, the condition. So if you have a look at condition number 11, as currently proposed, and on the fourth line down, where it refers to one metre from the nearest residential window, in the 2016 commission, it referred to um, from the facade of 37 Roman Way. Okay. As opposed to the nearest window. Generically referencing the nearest window. Is it possible that we could change it back to 37 Roman Way? If you think that, um, that it's necessary, then yes, you can. I think that would reassure um, the objector whilst not incurring any extra burden for the applicant, so it would it seems to make sense. What's an idea we we do that? Thank you. I think we could include it, um, particularly as both well, not the applicant and the objector of both sort of agreed that that, that that makes sense. Works. Okay, so I now need to move to a vote on this application, please. Um, any particular comments before we move to the uh, vote? That's okay. quick. We do keep all the conditions, including condition five on SATs, only we strengthen the uh, noise issue. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for clarifying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Just, just a quick point for me. I think it's hugely welcome um, that a hotel is investing in the borough, and tourists want outside space. From my perspective, it's better that a hotel is doing it than an Airbnb because you can actually control people. So I'm very supportive of the application with. With, with the extra conditions, the special conditions on noise and odour. So I think very important to assure the objector. Okay, so we have a recommendation of the committee grants. Planning Commission with the conditions listed in section 8 plus the additional one. Uh, I'd now like to move to a vote. Those in favour of granting that, please raise your hands. All four. Uh, I will ask for the formalities. Is anybody against? No. So that is granted. Thank you very much. Can we now move on, please, to application uh, 146 to 144, and I think we'll get it. Who's going to present that? Fiona, you're going to present your own. Can I get a change? <laughs> Thank you, Chairman. Um, so, just uh, turn to this application. This is for um, a non material amendment. So, it's slightly different to the planning applications you've seen earlier this evening. Just um, want to draw members' attention to the late um, objection received from Councillor Gardner. Um, this is really important. Um, within that, Councillor Gardner uh, mentioned that. Her original objection hadn't been included, but it was caught within the reasons for it coming to committee because she called it to the, the meeting, um, and also a copy was included in full. But just to make sure you're fully aware of that. Um, so this application is not a new commission. Um, we can't add conditions. It's just for determination whether or not we think this change is material. Um, so the application site relates to 146 to 164 Notting Hill Gate. Planning Commission was granted back in December 2019 for a hotel um, mixed use scheme that was majority hotel led. Um, we, originally, the rear windows of this onto this service road or car parking area and the side of this property on Victoria Gardens were shown on the drawings to be obscure glazed. So, within that blue section there, they, all those windows were shown to be obscure glazed. As built, and as they're seeking to confirm is no longer material, those are going to be clear glazed. So just turning to the next slide, this is the um, approved plan, showing that obscure glazing to the windows. And this is the proposed without it, and then actually adding a bit of obscure glazing to a kitchen area. I've included some um, sort of historic images to show you the relationship to that Kind of service area as existing so it's this is the building as it was onto this car park um and the, the back end and that's another historic image beforehand and this is them now so these are the windows as built as existing and shown to be clear gaze um officers have gone through the assessment um in the report for you um, and we have confirmed that we think it's non-material but it's for members this evening to determine it. So thank you, Chairman. That's my presentation. Thank you very much. And we do have some speakers uh, for this. 
And then someone bought, please, if you have to come and uh, make your statement. You have to commit it. You have three minutes, please. So I am here to represent Victoria Gardens, and my view tonight are shared by the Cambridge Residents Association and all what consumer as you mentioned. Uh, we, object to, we object to the amendment. It is not a non-material amendment. There are two things we think you should consider, the impact on the residents, and then the visual impact on the street. For the resident, it will make an extremely material difference to the local residents, since the north elevation of your hotel directly overlooks four in both Gate Hill Court and Victoria Gardens. This would lead to more intrusion to privacy and more light pollution. Share curtains are not an appropriate replacement for this. The street impact, the bedroom are small and the luggage will end up behind the curtain. From the outside, it will look like messy storage room to residents and passerby impact. This would not be a concern with an opaque glass, and also not a concern with an opaque glass would be how the curtain looks from the outside. In budget hotel, inevitably the curtains become broken, I'm sure with all experiences, which affects their utility as a barrier. We would also like to object directly to the following points from the report that led to a comment when the application. In paragraph two, in paragraph six point two, it says the guest bedroom are now proposed to incorporate shirt curtain for privacy. Privacy is the keyword. This is quite an unbalanced argument as the shirt curtains are controlled by the guest. The guests can enjoy on demand privacy while the residents are not allowed the same courtesy. If the guest decides to not draw their curtains, there is absolutely nothing that the residents or the hotel can do. Privacy was a key consideration in the original parent permission and formed part of the original objection to the project. Privacy is still key to the residents. And every time the hotel makes an application, it seems to be directed at less privacy and less tranquility for the residents. In paragraph 6.4, there are no side windows to the southernmost Victoria Gardens houses, which would be affected. affected sorry. There are plenty of windows on the west side of the back of Victoria Gardens, number four, five, six, seven, over mm -hmm. directly the hotel. If you look at the map, the windows are not south, but they are southwest. And the hotel and the back of the houses are facing each other at 70 degree angles, so they do look on each other. The residents' associations foresee endless licensing variation in the future. We would be grateful for the committee support, and we'd like to ask the committee to support its original decision to include this condition in those rare windows for the residents' sake, and send a message that the hotel needs to adhere to plans and permissions, and consult with the residents beforehand and not have an afterthought. We, as residents, are having to leave with this hotel on our doorstep 24-7, and the committee needs to ensure a balance between us and the hotel. We think the hotel has done a really good job at tidying up the area and putting more greens, and we would like to keep it tidy inside and also outside. Thank you for your time. Thank you. I'd now like to ask, please, um, agents to come speak. Who's going to speak to the agents? Good evening. My name is. Them. 12 seconds more, so you've got 12 seconds more. But very good. I, I'll try to keep it short. My name is Hannah Bertone and I'm planning manager for Frogmore and we're the development manager for the hotel. Um, first of all, I fully appreciate the uh, anxiousness of, of the of residents and we are constantly in liaison with them with, with all sorts of things about the estate which we also manage in terms of servicing etc. and we're trying to improve things. Um, in terms of these windows, the reason that the non-material application was submitted was because my uh, recollection of the reason why the frosting was put into the windows was slightly different than the residents. It was, as far as I remember, it was put in to, to protect the privacy of the, of the occupiers in the rooms. And that's because actually these windows do face no other windows around them, um, but the service yard is, of course, in use. Um, and at the time when we were designing this hotel, the occupier was not known. So we just wanted to create 
something that would suit most occupiers. Since then, we have a, an occupier, and their preference was to introduce curtains, which the, which the guests could control, rather than frost fully the windows. So the reason for the non-material application was because we genuinely believed that it was there for the privacy of the occupiers, not for any overlooking purposes. So that's just to explain to you the, the reason for the application as it has been submitted. And our understanding is that these windows do look into a service yard. There is the flank wall of number seven, Victoria Gardens, and there is the garden wall. So they aren't looking directly at any windows. And we have had a meeting with the officers in site who feel that that is correct and that therefore it should be non material. But happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much. Um, would you like to come back and join us uh, so that the member of the committee may ask the speakers some questions? Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Um, question to the applicant. I know he's uh, essentially serving the hotel rooms, I believe. Yes. And you wouldn't have any control for the guests to either switch off the lights or close the curtains or anything. It obviously would be. No, there wouldn't be controls in terms of the curtains. There is control, obviously, in terms of the lights. So what you want to do is when, when the car, key card is removed and there's nobody there, then the lights need to be switched off. And for in terms of switching on the lights and often when, when your client is within the room? Yes, yes, no, no. Because obviously, I come to a garden and send some posters if they come to the uh, ground and just thinking, you know, point number two is it's simply the problem below. Which are the good ones that are going to be good ones? Yes, there have been a little bit of a occupation. All right, thank you. Thank you. Yes, good. I just want some clarification because of this thing. I have a chance to walk away. So, for that objective. Uh, so, let me first of all, I'm going to share the committee of the committee. Can you just tell me, those have uh, looked frozen windows. Are you one of those people living? Is it residential area here? No, so this is the front of the TNT and we are in the back. So the frozen windows that are suggested mm -hmm. were the ones that were here. Okay. So the melting of gate is over here. Yeah. So what about the So we are also put mm -hmm. this just directly here. So how many meters can you run? About, well, it depends. So the street can we, yeah, uh, we can we all, see this. So we're talking about the real. Yeah. So I think you, you're here, right? Okay. Yeah. Number 16. Yeah, it's, yeah, yes, it's but I'm not talking about. I mean, you know, I'm here as the head of the Residence Association, so I'm not talking about my mm -hmm. specific right. house. Right. Yeah. Do we have a. Bring in the plan. The plan we're back. Slightly going over. Any more questions for the speakers? And then we'll come I'm just putting into clarification. Echoes residential. Properties. Yes. Yes. Have any objections from those residents back? For this specific application, I don't. They wouldn't because none of those windows are concerned. It's all in the back. Oh, okay. Yeah. There's a few of those windows at the back, back okay. which showed on that road. So yeah, front can be all right as it is. Okay. Um, yeah. Last question for the speaker, please. Just a quick question, just to clarify, do any of these windows face other windows and still the, the windows that are subject to this non-material amendment, do they face any other windows? May I? Yes, please. Uh, it's a little bit confusing. Well, there is actually the issue on how far away from these windows it is. Like a proper photo of the street and this is the window. So, can we just let the speaker uh, okay. This is... The back of the yes. hotel, right? This is Notting Hill Gate, yes. going towards Hyde Park. The Vic that's the back of the Victoria Gardens. And those windows directly, because this is the back, but this is really the back. Mm -hmm. this, those are like lower extensions, so it's only on the first floor. So the back of all of the houses, first floor, second floor, directly, and as you can see, it's not straight. So it and the hotel actually is also not straight. So you have an angle like this, meaning that all of those windows are, actu are actually facing directly onto those uh, bedrooms. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. That's very useful. Thank you. Any other questions for the speakers? Thank you. Can we now any questions for the officers? Yes, but. Do you want to pop back? Thank you. Thank you. Since the residents mentioned that the drawing is not correct, how possible that we don't really see the angle and then we have a clear picture how these windows actually face each other? You see, this is quite misleading here because there is an angle, yes? So you explain there is an angle, there is no issue, but it seems to there is issue, the drawing is not correct. Uh, no, the drawing is correct through you, Chairman. So the, this is the north elevation, so the development description refers to just the north elevation and it's here. These are the back of these properties. Now I'll turn to the aerial image um, that we included. So it's a slight delay. But I think this, I included these um, to show you that relationship as best as I could. Mm -hmm. um, so these are the windows on the back of the properties on Victoria Gardens. So as you can see, they, they face away, we would say, at a 70 degree angle, the objector confirmed. And these are where the new windows are. I can't show you yeah. the existing site mm -hmm. situation because yeah. of I don't have those aerial images because they're not made, but they... And there's no... Sorry, stick with that, here. stick with that, please. Yeah, stick with that. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And there's no windows on the end of that building that face. Yes, none on the end of that directly affected, as far as I understand. They, there could be a secondary window <coughs> to a hallway, um, but I haven't got um, an image of that directly. Let me double check for you. There isn't, okay. But I don't think there's any... Yeah. Windows on that side at all. Okay. So yeah. To, just two questions. So from from the new proposal window all the way to number seventy two or sixty referring, it's eighteen meters. So from from here, yeah. from the back the way, to here. Yeah. The direct. That's what the report confirms. Yeah. yeah. It seems to be eighteen meters. Yeah, so, and they're not directly facing. So if we go back to the policy regarding overlooking and what the technical standards we operate, for direct facing windows, we would want to see a minimum of 21 metres between them. But for us here, we're looking at the site circumstance where the windows are angled away from each other, in our opinion, which is why, I mean, the report goes into why uh, we think it's non-material, and there was no conditions attached to that original permission suggesting that obscured gazing was necessary or needed to be maintained. Um, and that's like an important consideration within it. So officers weren't the ones who asked for that obscure glazing. We didn't put a condition on the original permission to say it was needed because of that overlooking. It was part of the design of the hotel. It was considered at the time, as the report goes into, but we didn't then put a condition on to make sure that happened. And looking at this now, we're, we're comfortable with that relationship, given kind of the car park service nature, there's a public access down there. And those windows inside that building, we're comfortable with that relationship. But in fairness, we wouldn't need it to put a condition on because the windows and the windows plants were frosted, so yes. that's a slightly... Yes, uh, absolutely. So it's whether it's material or not, that's your okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's a helpful description from the speaker that you've heard. Yeah. Okay, so we now need to move to make a decision on this. And you see that uh, it is recommended the committee grant the non-material amendment application. Would those in favour please raise their hands? Would those against? Two each. So I uh, will go with the report. Um, so that means it is granted. And we now move on to Albert Place, please. Albert House. Thanks, Chairman. I again just like to draw members' attention to an additional objection that was received by the case officer and unfortunately missed off the agenda but wanted to make sure you'd seen that. Um, many concerns within that um, objection relate to the youth um, and, and that being considered and the report just confirms that there's no um, part of this proposal that um, requests a change of use or any alteration to the use as existing. So if they're operating in a different way or at a later date apply for permission, that would be considered separately. This application is just purely for the air conditioning unit that has been installed um, and it is a retrospective application. 
photograph of the building taken from Street View um, number 27. Here is the ground floor plan as proposed. So that the entrance gate as you go into the site was seen in a photograph and three large air conditioning units have been installed in this location. It's retrospective for that, but acoustic enclosures are also going to be put around these air conditioning units, and that's what's shown on the drawings. So you can just see a section detail through, because they talk about in the supporting information that it will be no higher than the side wall. But there's a really helpful photograph on the next slide. Oh, apologies, sorry, this is the um, aerial image that shows they would be, it, they have been restored in this location. It's a really helpful photograph from the objectors showing them. So it's, this is the boundary wall around that courtyard area. And these are the units as installed without their acoustic enclosure, which forms part of this application. And that's them there. So officers are recommending approval for the application subject to our stringent noise conditions. Um, and that concludes my presentation. Thank you. And we do have speakers for this, so I'd now like to call upon Mrs. Jensen and David Jensen, who are objecting to this application. And together you have three minutes. Thank you. Um, installation of three air conditioning units with associated acoustic enclosures in the carpet it sounds pretty uncontroversial, but it's not. The title of the application is disingenuous and has not been subject to proper scrutiny. As shown in the plans, the plant room previously housed all climate control equipment for this premises. According to the owner's presentation to local residents, this is to be converted into an additional meeting room, which is why the air conditioning units are being put into the courtyard. A more accurate description of what is proposed would be First step in increasing capacity of the premises by A, changing the use of the existing plant and equipment room into a meeting room, and B, expand, expansion of air conditioning capacity by more than 50% than what is necessary to cool the premises as it stands today in anticipation of a future planning application. For, and that's why these units are being placed in the courtyard. The planning department knows full well because the owner has sought pre-planning approval for the additional works to be done and has briefed residents on their plan, so this is not a secret. We have spoken to the manufacturer of those units, Fujitsu, and we understand that the three units combined capacity is almost twice that which is required to cool a premises of the size that we have in front of us, which is 645 square meters. So the excess capacity which is being put in place, or which is proposed to be put in place here, establish a, a clear and unequivocal connection between these units and future plans to grow the capacity of the premises. So therefore, it should be looked at in combination and not in isolation as the applicant is, is trying to do here. Now, I, I wonder whether the planning department has considered, for example, proposing that the units be put on the premises roof we're putting them back in the plant room. And where is the analysis showing how the planning department determined that policy CE6 was followed, i.e. that noise and vibration sensitive development is located in the most appropriate location. In addition, the units increase the overall capacity of the premises. One of the two decisive issues in point 6.22 of the of the report is good living conditions and this must consider the the use of the excess capacity as this directly is tied to the subsequent expansion plans that have not been put before the committee yet and this has not been we've some we and the other residents of the street have submitted many photos showing the excessive use of this uh property it is simply not being used as an office as we speak. It is being used as a light industry site or depot, call it what you what you will. Constant lorry traffic uh, in and out. 
Uh, Ms. Wesley has told us the council is looking into this, but we have not been informed of any result. I just don't see how, in light of this, the council can possibly grant permission for anything. Thank you very much. Thank you. That increases use. Thank you. And there was no post. I'm afraid you've had your three minutes. Thank you. Um, I would now like to call upon Mr. Bell. Um, I'm Boyd Rivor, I'm the architect and uh, agent on this application. Um, just in sort of direct response to what's been discussed, um, there is no proposed increased capacity. Um, the, the proposal is that for the application that, that's gone in. Um, what's been worked on that application is the uh, a daylight sunlight report was carried out where we noticed um, a small amount of harm was being um, created, so we decided to scheme to take to remove that harm. Um, the, the the units themselves, the AC units, they are for heating and cooling, and not for cooling alone. So I'm not an expert on their capacity, but I would assume that the heating and cooling is why they are the size they are, um, and they weren't put back into the the, the, the units that are in the. Um, I don't know if you've got a plan that you can pull up on that. You'll see that storeroom where the units were previously. Um, they wouldn't obviously fit the units with acoustic enclosures. Um, and in order to meet the uh, council's acoustic requirements, they do require enclosures. Um, and a uh, acoustic report has been carried out, which um, which notes that they do comply. Um, I believe the um, the uh, health, uh, the environmental health office has also uh, commented that, 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 that they would comply. Um, they put in a couple of conditions, or, or the, they put in a couple of conditions uh, which was implemented on approval. That's all. Okay. Thank you very much. With the objective now, I'd like to come back to the table and give the members a chance to ask any questions. Councillor Recky. Thank you, Chairman. Um, just for a second, is that your four foot view? And essentially, you would put something down. Can we, if we talk about, can we get them up yeah, on yeah. here, then we all know what we're talking about, please. Is it one of the so, images? Yeah, well, that's that plan there shows the four foot yeah. Well, that's, you know, visually, that's not a great representation. Yeah, if you, if you could stay there. I was going to, sorry, I was it's going to... It's all right, right. this is perfect, this is okay, perfect, lovely. actually. So the forecourt would be that area where you're proposing? Well, the forecourt is that area, that, that exists at the moment. The three units where they're currently positioned will be moved as per the um, plans, because they need to be moved further away from the, the boundary wall. Um, in order to accommodate the acoustic enclosure, and the acoustic enclosure requires a distance away from, uh, from, the, from the boundary wall. So they'll be spread more evenly across that. That distance, but they still remain in that front. Um, and 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 the surrounding buildings is number twenty seven, which you own. Number twenty six. So number twenty six or number twenty seven? Is, is that the twenty twenty seven? The twenty seven. That the large roof that you see, the where it says twenty seven Kelso Place. That uh -huh. roof, um, that that extension with the render there, and also the workshop at the back. Uh -huh. uh, number twenty six is obviously where where you can see the conservatory. Oh, the okay. Room. So so the the the, the, the last conservatory room. roof is ours at number 26, and, and all the windows that we're looking are bedrooms from our house. Wait, right. so the, the forecourt is exactly in the middle, you're saying? Yes. 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 The extent where that white wall is. So that's adjacent or, or in, detach, in attachment with number 26? It's semi-detached. No, it's not, it's not part of Attached, I mean, it's surrounded by 26. Technically, that's 26, isn't it? I may just go back to the very first image yeah, please, to yeah. clarify, please. Chairman, sorry. Because it shows the kind of undercroft, I think that's... There we are. Right, so you yeah. go through the undercroft into that space at the rear. Right. And number 26 is to the left of this image here. Okay. So do we have a picture of the existing, where the existing uh, air conditioning units were? Yeah, they were in part of the building, weren't they? Don't have a picture. They were in where, where is this store? Right. Okay. In there. So why do they need to be bigger? Basically. 
These new units not fit into the existing building? Not with acoustic inclusions, no. But would they need the acoustic yeah. inclusions if they, were if they were within the building? Yeah. The old, the, the old units have been there historically and um, were noisy and, and fading. So they, that's what it was Can I invite the objectors to respond to the assertion? Yes. Uh, it's a perfect storage room and it's actually a heating room. And he has been taken down, and there was some metal ventilation. So, why do they put three huge units when they actually there were existing units and it's the same square meters? Because in your application, you. you just say replace it. Thank so, you. they're twice as big. And just one final question for the applicant, if I may. What will the acoustic enclosure be made out of? Uh, um, they are. Um, and nothing special or different. Um, they're a salamander unit. Where I've got it somewhere. Um, I believe they're made of metal, um, painted dark mm -hmm. grey. I, I, I know the Oxford report does say that the um, weather currently sighted it can be viewed from a large number of um, other properties, but from some other properties. So no, the, you, you, so from from the. Um, on the street, there's no view of the units at all. They're, they're around that corner. If you, if you go back to the previous photograph, you can see. But from the house next door, where the residents. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. that was my point. So they can be seen. They can be seen. From these neighbors. Yeah. My, my concern is we're in a conservation area. Sure. And you can't assure me what the enclosures are going to be made out of. All right. We've actually submitted, the, as part of the application, we've submitted the, the specification. Just, um, just, I don't know if you guys have got it. It's a, OK, well, let's see the officers. That's the officers. Any more that's questions on the speakers? Yes, I have a question. Yes, I remember the bit puzzled. here. Because this is seems to be retrospective application, right? Which means you put something without even consulting these neighbors. You set yourself walls meet acoustic, and they would be in storage because still you need the acoustic. So how possible you put them outside knowing that they need? I mean, I mean, there is a room for it. So for me, it's more than less. You know it's a conservation area. You do not put anything in front of the residents around. Can you just respond, what was the logic behind? And why do you need them? Do you want to have this storage space free and use it out as the office or something? What is the purpose of those? What you are heating, what you are cooling? What is the purpose what of What was the purpose of fitting them? We, we, are, we are assessing what's in front of us and what is in front of yeah, us. Yeah, but it has been demolished. The storage Madam, has please, been I'm demolished. Madam, please, I'd like to ask you to sit back down if you don't allow the committee to function. We have to go on what's in front of us. What is in front of us is a unit with acoustics around it. This committee can only work for that. Yes, um, but there should be reinforcement first, then actually... Yes, we are looking at what's in front of us. I need a reason. I want to know what was the purpose of those, what is cooling, what is heating, because the residents are there and the view is literally obstructed. It's a conservation area. Okay, so what's your question, to be all over that, not trying to legalize something which shouldn't be, but it's a conservation we are, we are area. We are looking at what is in front of us. If we don't work with what is in front of us, we are not following the rules of this committee. What is your question, please? What was the reason to put the votes in the first place? Thank you. Would you like to ask? So they replace the um, heating and cooling units that are in that storage. Um, so that, that to replace existing heating and storage units. Yeah. Is it because you are enhancing any air conditioning within the building? Or you no, they're doing the same job, they're just the newer. Uh, a newer new version, yeah. upgrade. Okay. Excuse me, may I just say that according to Fujitsu, it is not necessary to have those three units that he claims don't fit in that room because the capacity is almost 100% more than what is required to service 645 square meters. Okay? And today, a crater... Oh, sure, that's, that's it. That's it. That, those are facts. Fujitsu provided them, not me. Okay. What was the decider to put those specific yeah. units there, please? 
And well, it, it would have been on capacity heating cooling. I wouldn't expect them to put more than we need unless somebody oversold it to our client. I mean, I, I wouldn't, I don't know. So what was the make of that one which you broke inside the storage? Why didn't you just research and replace it? Was it so under guarantee? Not I'm not, I'm, the AC, we, we, okay. the they broke the 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 We're getting beyond this committee. What would these are here? These are here, and we have to vote on whether we accept these or we don't accept them. The client has decided to go with these for whatever reason, and we have to accept whether we accept them or we don't accept them. Thank you very much. Can we now move to asking questions of the officers? Thank you. Can I just say I'm something? I'm afraid you can't, madam. We, we have to follow the, the procedure of the committee. Thank you. But the application is misleading. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just a question for the officers. Um, I, I know you stated in your response that this assessment has to focus on the visual impact of the units on the conservation area. We are in a conservation area with a lot of uh, very nice Victorian housing, as we can see. In terms of the applicant's proposal for the acoustic surround, do we do we know what that's going to look like? Yes, it's galvanised steel, as shown. So there's like a, a standard one to ensure it meets our noise criteria. So we've got two layers of different thickness of steel um, and it's going to be sort of a dark grey finish around the top and then a lighter grey finish on the on the inside bit that places into the courtyard um, within this service space as you know a courtyard servicing that office we have no objection to that design in that location as offices. And there'll be three separate blocks with that? It's, it's actually shown together because I think they will likely be fitted together so let me just go back to the plan, bring all three. Okay, and, and, and this is an office space. Apologies, can I just correct that? So we've got one that covers the two units. I knew there was a connection right. and then one separately. So just... it will look like that? Yes, like yes. this. Thank you. Thank you. And, and the usage is a commercial class? There's no change of use proposed at all. In this I know, but, but existing is a, it's an office space. Oh, yeah, it's an office use so at the moment. We, can we put a condition like overnight we can't have those air conditions on? Um, because obviously there will be no... You, I think on. technically you could um, right. to align with the hours, but because it, it cannot be audible from next door at all to comply with the conditions we've suggested, it kind of would duplicate what our conditions are already, already doing. So if next door can hear those operating and call our, our environmental health team, they come out and can hear them operating at any time, that fails to comply with the condition. If, if I may, there is some assistance difference because for that latter point, the neighbours would ha have to actually spend their time yeah, yeah. contacting officers. Yeah. You need to spend resources going around and checking whether you can hear it. If we say they can't operate outside the office hours, office hours um, it seems to be something that would work. We're we'll trying to mitigate that yes. noise issue. My only reservation would be that we don't have set office hours for this building because it's established in use, but um, I may just revert to Martin to think whether overnight hours when it's not going to be used. Uh, my, my personal view is that we have a condition that effectively controls the noise emitted so they cannot, you cannot hear that they're within acoustic enclosures the noise is, um, is reduced to a level that you cannot hear. That is a day or night, so it's the lowest background, uh, below the lowest background noise level, which typically is measured at night anyway. Um, we don't know what hours this um, office operates. There's no control over the hours this operates. And by putting that condition on, you're potentially preventing the heating or cooling of that office when it needs to be um, occupied. And I don't think it's really reasonable to do that. And we've got a condition that stops the unit being audible anyway. So, so at, at, time. at any point, imagine if the noise levels exceed the threshold, whether it's 15 decibels or you know, about 10 decibels, then if there's a complaint from environment steam, then what would be the action, enforcement action? So we can serve a breach of condition notice because. Um, uh, uh, condition three, the last sentence, if at any time the plant is unable to comply with the condition, it shall be switched off and not used again until it's able to comply. So at that point, we could go out, we can hear it, and we could serve a breach of condition notice. When that's happened in the past, most people, most people do just turn it off there and then, resolve the issue, and then come back to us. But we could, that would be our enforcement power.
So in a way, that's already in there. We don't know what the office hours are, so it's going to be difficult to say what the office hours are. The increasing the office hours are longer or whatever, yeah. so that's going to be very difficult. So we now do need to, to go to a vote on this. And if we look at the <coughs> recommended committee to grant plans to move the conditions listed in section eight of this report. Um, would those members in favour of granting please raise their hands? Those members against, please raise their hand. Would those people abstain? Thank you. And we're, we're resisting this, we're refusing it on the grounds? Uh, the grounds I was thinking of are actually um, on grounds of appearance. I'm, I'm not convinced, considering we're in a conservation area, that a galvanised steel enclosure, when it's viewable from neighbouring properties, is appropriate when materials like brick and stone are more commonly used. So that would be my reason. Okay. For that being the reason, for that being the reason for you, um, if that's the reason that we can do it, what would you? I completely agree. It's conservation area, and there should be reinforcement instead of clapping hands. You can do whatever you want in conservation. It sets very very broad. Do you agree with that one? I absolutely agree that it should be refused and don't do it without permission from the council. That's no, not. So. That's not what we, we cannot use that as a reason. The reason we are using appearance conservation area Thank you. just for not to Okay, can we take a vote on that? That that is the reason we are to refusing this application. Thank you. So that application is refused. Um, we now have a series of applications without speakers. Uh, I suggest we take a five-minute comfort break and then come back and do those. Thank you. I can pause it. Right, the other two, and then we now go back to when they to arrive. Um, Colbert Muse, please. 
So what were you going to do? We were going to do Cromwell Road next. One, two, two, okay. A, if that's okay. And then, I'll, then I think the North Pack is finished. After. I think it's okay, fine, yeah. Yeah, if that's okay. Aaron is keen to finish his items, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, are we are we all back? We are now going to do one one two A and one one four one well road. Who is going to present that? Please. That's myself. Thank you, Chairman. Um, this application um, seeks permission for a new um, sort of mansard roof story behind the front of this bureau de chain. So planning permission was granted for a similar application in 2000, sorry, 2015, um, but has now lapsed. So that's a street view image. This is a quite a helpful visual that shows you the property here and the extent of the roof. This is an image of the mansard set behind that existing bottle balustrade that we describe in the report. This is just a, an image showing you the, the plan and how they will access with a new spiral staircase up to the new office space. Then this is the mansard roof as seen from the rear. So it's hidden behind the bottle balustrade at the front. And this is a section drawing showing how it would look in relation to that balustrade. This section is quite helpful as well because it shows the position of the window um, on the rear of 10 uh, Grenville Place um, and how it kind of looks out and over across it. And importantly, that window is slightly offset from, from the um, site itself, as you can see on the plan. Offices are recommending approval. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you. I'm, I'm just concerned by the window overlooking into number 10. Of course, that's a residential flat, could be someone's bedroom. I mean, have, have officers fully taken account of that in your decision? Yes, we have. I mean, in terms of the floor to ceiling height, we were comfortable with it, but it would be within members' gift to condition that to be obscured, glazed, and fixed um, if you were concerned about that relationship. Yes, I, I, I am concerned about that. I think it's a, residential dwelling and especially a window like that could very well be a flat with more bedrooms. So. I mean we don't didn't have a condition on the twenty fifteen commission but it's enough has changed and moved on and if would be possible to make the window glazed as a condition. Yeah obscure glazed and fixed shut that is definitely possible. Um, and is that possible to obscure the view and out of the biodiversity? Um, I would be concerned whether the that suds would be reasonable um, I know there's an increase in floor space, but we do have as existing an entirely kind of covered um, area. There's no increase to the footprint at all. If, for instance, you put a generous planter with some creepers up, you will obstruct the view. In the same time, you will have. Yeah, I, I, I think it would be that would be a kind of a nice design idea, but it's not the application we've got, so it would need probably revising the bulk in order to facilitate that. We're not looking to obscure the window, we're just looking to lay it to... to, to yes, I mean, I mean these windows... The window, we want people to be able to want the light from the window. Oh, sorry, yeah, obscure glazed and fixed shut, so it would be yeah. a, a yeah. you know... Yeah. Is that a side roof window that you should be showing that one? Yeah, this yeah. one, yeah, so that's the... I'll just bring it back to the... Um, it's, it's these kind of B-Lux windows sitting in the mansard along. Yeah. Okay, so that would be taller than 
probably about from from within, but also we we were looking at the direct facing view. So you've got these um, roof lights; they look out onto the, the wall, the neighbours' windows here. But still, I mean, I still think it would be reasonable to obscure glaze and fix them if and, you were concerned. And that wouldn't uh, reduce the sunlight in any sense. There would still be natural light coming into that space, and then they would still have um, you know a degree of sky view from the front. And, I mean, your expectation within a mansard roof served only by roof windows would be lower than, you know, yeah. and it's an office. So yeah. I think I think that's, yeah. you know, acceptable. Okay, I want to move to a vote on this. So with the additional condition of, do you want to repeat what, what we're putting in? Um, to obscure glaze and fix shut the rear windows. Okay. The, it is then recommended to the committee grants planning permission with the condition of this in section 8 plus the additional condition. Those in favour, please read. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. That is granted. Which do you want to move on to next? I think the next one is to finish up the north pack, if that's okay, and then I can swap with our own. Depending on Church Street. Yes. Yeah, so the next application is for 215217 and Church Street. Lovely. So this um, application is for a temporary change of use of this building for an urban youth room for a period of two years um, while the Newcombe House development um, continues. Just turning to the plans to quickly show you those. Very limited internal changes and also very limited changes to the front elevation, just sort of painting and maintenance. Officers are recommending approval. Thank you, Chairman. It's before you this evening because it's a council application. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Move. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Yeah. I've got no objections. I just add one question. Why only, why only two years? It, because it will be redeveloped as part of the Newcomb House um, development proposal. So they have a planning commission in place that will be demolished at some point. Okay, that's why. Um, I was just curious. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the recommendation of committee grant planning commission with the conditions listed in section 8 of this report. All those in favour? That is granted for in favour. Thank you. So we're now moving to going back to the one where the speaker where the speakers <laughs> is Colbert Muse. Now the Colbert Muse. Thank you. Okay, this is Nine Club Muse. Item agenda is 038. Uh, Plan Commission is sought for the alterations to the, to the property concerning uh, rear um, first and second um, floor extensions with roof light, also at the same time a balcony at the second floor. Uh, in addition to that, um, there will be a basement uh, construction and conversion of um, part of the garage to have full space. Um, this is the application site. Uh, it's a new type property situated on the north side of Colbert Mews. It does lie within the conservation area. Uh, area views of the site in question, uh, as you can clearly see, it's a two story with a, a mansard um, development um, that forms part of the wider Mews and Colbert Mews. Uh, these are images at ground floor level looking at uh, both directions of the subject site. The subject site is this one, um, which is um, highlighted by the, um, the cursor as well as the, you can see the distinctive uh, garage doors, which are commonly painted in yellow. So this is the um, view looking into the news, and this is the alternative view looking out from the news. It's also worth noting that none of these properties within the news have um, removed the original garage door to be converted into um, other windows and openings mm -hmm. along the same frontage. You say none have or some have? Some have, some have, some have. Um, existing and proposed ground floors, including new basement, right hand side, that's the new basement floor. We can clearly see it's within um, largely the footprint of the existing building. Um, on the left hand side, there are two garages at ground floor level one of which will be converted into a main kitchen and living room area. The, the other garage 
uh, to the left hand side will be retained so there will be some form of off street parking uh, through the conversion itself. Existing and proposed first floor plan, um, you can clearly see or make out that at this level the existing uh, open area to the back will be infilled completely as part of this particular proposal to create additional bathroom ensuite for the second bedroom. Um, existing and proposed uh, roof plans, at this level uh, you can make out that there will be a new second floor um, terrace area uh, as well as this continuation of the, the existing roof which slopes down um, towards the back of the property. Um, in terms of the front elevation changes, um, the, the existing central uh, window will be or opening will be replaced by traditional 3 over 3 slash windows in keeping with the um, other windows that sits alongside it at first floor level and um, there will be a new opening um, in terms of uh, a new entrance door with windows as well as the, the existing garage door to be repaired and, and reinstated. Uh, existing and proposed rear elevation, this is the new second floor external um, area uh, for occupiers of the existing dwelling house. You can see the cat slide roof will continue the same profile with two roof lights. And lastly, this is uh, an ex section of uh, the, the mount of development with the new basement as well as the new uh, roof slope uh, to be continued with the intervention of the particular roof lights. And that ends the presentation. Questions, please. Do you have a rear, rear extension photos overlooking neighbouring property? I can't see any of the visuals, as I can see on Google now. Um, I don't have neighbouring photographs um, taken, but the, as shown earlier in my presentation, there is an area of view, um, so you get to appreciate the relationship or the close relationship between the um, adjoining properties. So I'll just bring it up right now. Down. Yeah, so so this is the muse. You can see it's smaller stat in, in state in, in, in stature, because um, traditionally muse type development was more um, subordinate to the much taller development that surrounds it. Right. So you can see these are uh, multi-story, uh, four five stories, whereas the muse type is more low key, about two stories. In time. So there's no bi-direction privacy as such, because obviously the existing books. It's uh, I would say because of the, the urban gradient cl close nicked off the um, housing topology and all the relationship between the windows, um, officers do not consider, although there is a new balcony, it's not going to give rise to significant yeah. overlooking. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any more questions? Just a quick comment. I know the um, comment from the Director of Transportation and Highways about the previous CTMP. Uh, I'm just wondering, considering that previous submission was so poor, should we require that any CTMP come back to committee? We'd be curious to know uh, the views of the committee on that, um, considering the previous one was so poorly done. I would be happy to leave that to officers, yeah. so long as we're, we're, we're saying tonight that you know, it better be a yes. marked improvement. Yes, I think. Um, I think we're too many back to committee, David. Yes. Okay. Right, well, we can have that on the record. Five yeah. minutes yeah. on yeah. the minutes, yes. Okay, then can we move to a vote on this? It is recommended that the committee grant planning commission with the conditions listed in section 8 of this report. All those in favour? Great. All those against? Any abstentions? One abstention. So that is granted. Thank you. Two. I think it's one Cooney Muse. Uh, one Cooney Muse. Yes, I'll, just, I'll, I'll just go into the relevant slides. Apologies.
it's the um, it's the. So this is uh, a site um, for the where one cleaning moves as, um, as well as 51 to 60, 63 filled gardens. Um, the proposal itself, it's um, the section 73 planning application, which is essentially a variation to uh, a previous consent condition number two of a 2018 planning commission. Um, what effectively this application seems to do is to remove the consented green walls to the southwest and northeast elevations of that previous cons uh, consent. Um, this is the application site. Uh, you can clearly see uh, it sits south of the, the West Cromwell Road. Uh, this is a Cuthbert's church. It's, it's listed, so it's just situated north of that, uh, as well as the, the site um, adjacent to being within the conservation area. And access to the site is taken from Field Beach Gardens. Uh, just an alternative area views of the, the actual site. Uh, so this site did gain planning approval um, for a major development back in 2018, and um, it has been implemented um, approximately four years ago. Uh, so by way of background, uh, back in 2016, um, there was an application for a part six, part eight storey building comprising um, approximately 700 square metres of office space, 38 units and associated parking, landscaping, etc. So that was granted um, in 2018. Um, there were certain conditions imposed, such as the standard approved conditions. Um, as part of this approval, um, as well as the approved plans, um, there were green walls that were proposed as part of this particular uh, application. And that was secured through the, uh, the condition number two, which is the approved drawings. Um, so this proposal seeks to remove the green walls to the northeast as well as the southwest elevations, of which I would expand further um, in, in the following slide. And this is principally due to fire safety requirements in line with the, the current building regulations. So, so um, the principal reason is because the, the green wall, as currently proposed, um, pose a, a flood, a, sorry, a fire safety uh, risk um, to occupiers of the consented scheme insofar as it, it potentially could spread um, fire uh, and flames in the event of such an incident. Um, building Control have reviewed this particular application and supported what removing um, the, the green walls. There, there is no current um, um, green wall system in place that would allow uh, a green wall to be installed in line with the 2022 building regulations and that's one of the reasons mm -hmm. they, they're seeking to remove um, the green wall itself um, so if you strip back the green wall it will still reveal the, the high quality um, um, brick which was uh, approved as part of the, the original consent um, that is the northeast elevation but the significant um, elevation would be up west um, so this is more substantial in coverage and this will be entirely removed to reveal um, quite an interesting facade. So it's not a blank facade or solid facade. There is interest in terms of glass blocks as well as um, patterns to this um, visually interesting facade. And it's worth noting there's adjacent development that's built, being built adjacent to that or in the future that would more or less screen the majority of this facade. So that concludes this particular uh, Presentation. Thank you. Questions to the officers. Why don't we have a proper visuals actually? Because I walked there yesterday and today as well, trying to figure out where exactly physically is that green wall. So I walked up. There are two entrances to correct you. One is from Warwick Road, which is the main entrance, opposite Big Tesco, and a smaller one that I just created, it's from St. Cuthbert Church. So they have three which are now turning into green garden, they say. And I couldn't really visually see that green wall. And I asked four times and I couldn't see it. So where exactly is that? Was it proposed? And they are trying to remove those proposition condition. Where is it exactly? Um, what is no photo attached to really visuals there? Yeah, I appreciate there's no photos of um, the actual site itself as part of this presentation, but essentially um, what they got, got planning permission was for this green wall to be 
um, installed or fixed. Part of SATs? Pardon? As a part of SATs? Um, it, it's more about, um, I guess, improving the visual amenity of the area as well as increasing biodiversity and encouraging wildlife, etc. Because there, there are sort of ecological benefits to, to install green wool and um, and it could be used as potentially as to, to um, improve the, the, the size of the particular development. Um, but notwithstanding that, we have considered the, the positives in terms of uh, removing, stripping it back, as well as the, the danger it poses in terms of a fire risk hazard. But I haven't seen it physically being there, which means we are removing condition instead of removing wall which actually is not created. I mean, we can have a adjournment of this application and walk around to be fair and square to the applicant and to residents, but I honestly could not see that green wall. I walked from all sides and I could not see it. It's, it's, uh, I don't know the situation on the ground because uh, I'm not paid a, a side visit, but essentially, it's, it's, um, it's, you can consider it as a, a skin to an existing development, and what they're planning to do is remove that skin, which is part of this green wall proposal. And so you still be left with the, the, the existing treatment to the facade. That's something that the, the architect did consider as part of the original proposal in the event that if the green wall wasn't to be restored, what it would look like without the green wall. So um, the, the architect did consider that as part of the, the fallback position. So can you correct me if I am on the right track? So we are going to today the planning permission with green wall. Yes. And now we're trying the point that contradict ourselves. Well, we're, no, not, we're not contradicting. The rules of the laws change. The fire regulations. Yes. If it's green wall, it's a living wall. It's up to maintenance if it's green wall, yes or not. And if we are still well, can we, yeah, yeah, I think we're working. Uh, well, I was, uh, before, I was just going to clarify the, the, the previous question to um, Mr. Lau, um, just to confirm, the green wall has not been installed. The building is under construction. I saw it, it's yes, that's why I couldn't find it. Yes, because the green wall is not there. What they're proposing is an amendment to the planning permission, so, they, so the green wall is removed from the planning permission. So it doesn't exist at the moment on the building because it's currently under construction. Yes, but it's amending the planning permission to remove the green wall um, because the building regulations have changed um, from when the application was first submitted, um, where green, there is no green wall system that can comply with the current building regulations to prevent fire spread across the facade of a building. So we're proposing to remove it in order to ensure that this building is um, fire safe in line with up to date safety standards. But this is contradictory to the SAS policy, you just have to maintain the wall, simple as that. This wall was not there for such purposes, it was there for greening purposes, which had a, a various benefits, we admit, um, in terms of air quality, in terms of biodiversity, yes, in terms of visual amenity. However, the decision that has recommended by officers here is this green wall does not comply with current building regulations relating to um, fire safety in facades. So that so the the, uh, the applicant has come forward and said, can we remove this because it doesn't comply with current regulations, whereas it did at the time of the application. Officer's view is that we want to ensure the highest standards of fire safety in our buildings, and therefore it's appropriate to remove the green wall from the scheme. Would it be not more appropriate to lower the level and maintain something? Because what I'm driving at is, we have already come in a new huge development next to Tesco on Traga Road, on World Road. The condition will be very bad, so you have to look really how to remove of this condition. We, we don't have any speakers, objectors, but I think a few people mentioned here, air quality is already really bad in that spot. And having another development coming up, why don't we just mention something in regards to that? We allowed you on the level that you will still maintain, not taking that completely. Because yes, when I think, you, when I think you you're saying, saying, the officer is saying there is not a system on the available that would allow us to do that and be within the fire regulations. Yes, but when you go outside exhibition and literally opposite was Brompton, but it's a living green wall which is absolutely in reasonable level, about two and a half metres, and developers is enough money so, to so maintain just it. just to be clear, green walls in themselves um, 
it's not green walls per se, green walls on residential buildings under current building regulations. There is no, and confirmed by our head of building control, there's no current system that we are aware of that can comply with those building regulations. Commercial buildings, hoardings around the Earl's Court Exhibition Centre, you know, there are still green walls and green walls can still exist, but under building regulations on residential buildings, prevent the spread of fire on the facade for obvious reasons uh, there is there is no current green wall system that, that can be confirmed to comply with um, current building regulations but green leaving wall can be maintained because you water there's a system behind so if you take so that, I, think, I think we have to i think we have to accept that there is no yeah there's... but you can add conditions you already asked condition to another application and i see no reason whatsoever to just literally make condition you take one what, what condition would you like to add well, just literally say that, to the that, developer... That's fire conditions compliant. Yes, but you can have a green leaving wall, meaning that developer has to maintain the same like he maintains the okay. green spaces within. They have a okay. green would, would rain rest... garden, so it's the same, maintain something on a reasonable uh, level. And you know that that would be fire compliant? It should be, it's everywhere. You just put a pocket and you do attach the little wires, the little cables, and you water that. It's okay. a green leaving wall. I object the condition. Yeah. Oh, there's a, sorry, yeah. did you just on the specification? Yes. Okay, I, I, I object. So, so that condition is not carried by the committee. So can we now move to your next question? Just, just, just a very quick question. Just in terms of there not being any green wall system that can achieve um, the 2022 approved document be standards for fire safety. I'm sure but we're all in agreement the very clear reasons why that has to be complied with. But mm -hmm. there, are, there are many green walls across London and major cities. I'm, I'm just wondering, I mean, is it really the case that, you know, we could we could have sprinklers or it could be no more than a metre high? Or what, why isn't there any way we it's... can have some greenery for the B Highway and biodiversity and air quality? Um, it's, it's, it's just unfortunate because obviously it's what's happened is the the, um, the building regulations have sort of tightened in terms of fire safety and as a result of those changes there, there is a high expectation to prevent um, the, the, the risk and spread of fire and that includes any form of um, green wall which forms part of um, residential development to which uh, Martin explained earlier and I think Maybe in the future, where companies and manufacturers are looking to devise a, a system that meets building regulations, but unfortunately, at this moment of time, given the fact that the building regs were only updated last year, um, the manufacturers and companies are playing catch up, and they potentially looking at ways that eventually you will be able to achieve uh, a green wall to be installed for with eventual development, but not at this current time. So, and just a point that I'd like Martin to make: that this. There are a number of other green initiatives by and on the site. This is yeah. the only one. Do you want to just... Uh, yeah, just to confirm that the, the proposal does include green rooms and, and they are the same. The green rooms aren't subject to the same building regulation constraints. Um, and obviously there are um, external areas outside the site where um, uh, planting and such measures can also be introduced. So, so the scheme as a whole um, still does have certain uh, certain measures included within it. We've obviously, within this report and this presentation, very much focused on the green wall and the justification for its removal. Let me just ask, could you just mention that there is green roof in the development? Green roofs, yeah. But green roof or green is you mean, like a... Green roofs. So there is no green roof? No, there are green roofs. Which means green rain gardens on the ground, maintained by the gardener who will be looking after them. On, on the roof, mm -hmm. there are green roofs on the roof of the building. So if there are green roofs and they will be maintained, how different it is to maintain the wall? I'm not here to explain to you why the building regulations are what they are. We cannot debate and change the building regulations. I appreciate your frustration, I'm sure the industry is even more frustrated and is seeking to find a system that can comply. But as it stands today, there is not a green wall system. But there are no windows there. That's not a factor. That's not, that's not, a, factor. It's not a factor. And it's being looked at. Um, by I think as a committee, we have to accept 
this report as it is or not. You can choose when we go to a vote. But what this report is saying at the moment, there are no products out there no. that are fire, uh, fire compliant that could replace that green wall. That's correct. That's what we're having there for. If you don't agree with that, you can reflect that in your vote when we when we come to it. But we have to go with what we have in this report. So I'm now going to move to a vote, and it, it, the recommendation is um, to grant planning permission satisfactory completion of the undertaking agreement to secure the mass in section seven of this report for the conditional list in section nine report. Um, and then there's point two to it, um, which is to refuse the planning commission of an undertaken or agreement to secure the contribution section seven report has not been satisfactorily completed by the 30th of June 2023. So those in favour of granting this with uh, with those as per laid out in there, please raise your hands. Those objecting, those refusing, please raise your hand. I object. I I I don't have opinion, which means I abstain. You abstain. Okay. Thank you. So that is granted. Thank you. And we now move to Hollywood Road. Divide Hollywood Road. Okay. This is uh, the item for Spy Hollywood Road. Plan permission is sought for the installation of air conditioning units within acoustic places located in the wide uh, garden of the property. Uh, this is the site as outlined in the uh, red. Uh, it is the uh, end of uh, Terrace property. There is a, a commercial gallery um, to the lower ground floors and it does sit within one of the conservation areas. Um, just views of um, the site um, can clearly make out that it is um, a three story property with a, um, a butterfly roof and it does benefit from a rear garden. Um, to where my cursor is located. Um, these are images taken from um, the application as well as um, the one on the right was taken from one of the local residents. Um, you can clearly see that um, there's scaffolding that's currently around the, the subject site because uh, consent was granted for various external works uh, for the property itself. Uh, whereas this application concerns this particular part of the garden to where the acoustic um, air conditioning unit will be sited. Um, these are the site plans. Um, so there's a slight notch in the, the back garden of this subject site. So that the plan is to install uh, the air conditioning units right adjacent um, to the back end of the, the property. Uh, moving on the existing proposed um, sections. Uh, again, this is looking at um, where the air conditioning units will be located so it's indicated in this particular part of the site and you can appreciate also that the height it's no more than single story in terms of um, the acoustic uh, enclosure um, itself and turning to the reverse side now um, you clearly make out the the air conditioning units will be contained within the enclosure it's worth noting that obviously the air conditioning units as expected the noise report would normally be provided by the applicant. That report has been reviewed by the Council's Environmental Health Team. Um, they raised no particular objection subject to the imposition of the conditions set out in the committee report. And that concludes the presentation. Thank you very much. Any questions, Councillor uh, Reddy? Thank you, Chairman. Uh, Mr. Lau, um, why are they proposing the, you know, the, the construction at the rear close to the um, not close to the rear premises, but you know the rear of the garden. Can they not do it closer to the rear of the building? Um, I mean that that's a decision um, that's been taken by the applicant. I can only imagine the reason why it's located the, to the rear part of the build of the site is to, to allow for the usable space that sits in front of it. So it's not in the way of um, the user. Which um, incidentally is um, a gallery or some forms like studio at the lower ground, so they need as, as much indoor and outdoor space. Whilst um, proposing to have some form of air conditioning system be located right again the back end of the yeah. garden. I'm just worried about the noise for the 
really in a great building that exists just there. Is, is there a photo now? Um, the, the only photo was in my earlier slide taken by one of the local so, residents. So it's going to be situated in this location here. And that's the rear building behind them. That's right. So it includes. Yes. So, I mean, although it looks extremely close to the, to that particular uh, residential property, it is typical of these air conditioning units to be um, accommodated within a, an acoustic. The reason being is because if there's no acoustic in place, that noise will be um, audible or detectable from, from those windows. So by um, accommodating the air conditioning units, you mitigate any sort of dispersion of noise um, originating from the air conditioning units. That whole system has been reviewed and we factored in as part of the noise um, report because the noise report would identify mitigation and one of the mitigations would be the acoustic enclosure. That has been read and reviewed by the Council's environmental health team in which they raised no particular objections subject to those conditions set out in the report. Thank you. Any other questions? So we found that St. Clean was a timing of switching off. Kind of, the, the condition itself would impose that. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. I'm going now then to move to a vote, and it is recommended that the committee grant planning commission with the conditions listed in section 8 of the report. All those in favour, please raise their hands. Gentlemen, and that is granted. Thank you very much indeed. Can we now move to Gun to Grow? Well, this is the last last item for tonight. This is 19 um, Gunter Grove. Uh, plan permission is sought for the uh, direction of the extension to the existing roof terrace with associated uh, roof um, alterations. This is the site, it's a mid terrace property and it does lie within uh, a conservation area. Some area views of um, the front and the rear. Um, it's worth noting that um, it is. Uh, a two-storey with a lower ground floor. As you can see, um, there is some form of um, roof development um, um, situated on the existing um, um, roof terrace of the, the, the property itself. Um, part of this proposal seeks to remove an unlawful situation. So these were taken from one of the opposite neighbours looking back at the site. Um, you can make out this large a rectangular block which has been unlawfully um, constructed. Part of this proposal seeks to remove that and restate it to how it was originally and that's something officers would support. Um, so the, the extension of the, um, the roof um, structure would, um, would comprise of uh, an increase in depth of that particular extension itself. So it, it will be set back um, from the principal um, front elevation, so it won't be visible as such from within the, the wider views as well as the conservation area setting. Um, it will maintain the existing width, and what you also see there is this, this unlawful structure will be removed um, as part of the proposal, and the original double doors will be reinstated um, to, to open out onto that um, landing of the closet window. Um, some front and rear elevations, comparisons of the existing and proposed. Um, you can make out that, that unlawful structure which was previously seen in the previous photo. That would be entirely removed and um, reinstated to how it was previously. Uh, there is an existing timber fence, but that would be maintained. So it won't be so noticeable in terms of the extension um, to the existing development on the roof. And um, these are just um, elevation, side elevations. Again, um, it will just continue to be no higher than the existing structure that sits at the top of the roof. And that concludes the end of the presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much. Questions, Councillor Lane. Just a couple of questions, Mr. Lau. The first question is removing that unlawful, looks like a plastic lock to me. I don't know what it actually is, but these sort of the, the off white coloured thing. You, you say that's a fact of weighing in favour of grant commission, but surely if it's unlawful, they, they have to remove it anyway. I, I, I don't understand how that can be um, of significance to the application. Otherwise, 
prospective applicants would just do something unlawful, make their property look horrid, and then say, oh, well, I'm going to remove this as part of my application. So I, I just don't understand why that aids them. It, I mean, it forms part of this application, so we have to give it due consideration, and uh, we need to consider what's the lawful position or the unlawful position as part of this application, and what our position in removing that, because obviously we consider it to be a benefit as part of the proposal. Um, I appreciate where you're coming from because if something's been constructed unlawfully, it will be subject to enforcement. So rather than dealing with it separately, they're dealing with it under a single application, dealing with the unlawful um, part of the development as well as proposing a new part of the development, which is the extension to the existing rooftop extension. Yeah, I'm just not sure why it's there in the first place. It, 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 it seems to me like, like, a, like a trick personally. And I think if it's unlawful, then we have enforcement powers to all yes, the state remove it anyway. So yes. my view is it shouldn't weigh in terms of the application. Just one further question. There seems a bit of dissonance between the objections which say they're planning to build rooms, a bathroom concealed behind timber um, fencing, yet in your evaluation, you, you're very clear there's no further extensions proposed. Why, why, it's quite rare we see something like that. Why, why is there such a difference between residents' objections that say other rooms are proposed? Um, I mean, you can clearly you clearly make out on this um, proposed plans what what the actual proposal or the intention to use the additional floor space. I mean, it is quite uh, a minor development in terms of floor space, and um, you can see that it's to com accommodate um, some form of bathroom at that level. Um, obviously, this unlawful situation, um, I, know, I know obviously your, your, your position on that, that will be removed. So it looks like we're removing uh, some form of toilet or bathroom block in that and relocating it through the extension. So that is essentially what is being proposed. So, so, so they're essentially, I can start, they've essentially built that toilet block unlawfully, you admit, on the left-hand side, Correct. and then they're proposing to move it to the, to the right-hand side, it. as you see there. That's right. Yes. Okay. Very well. Thank you, Mr. Lyon. Any other questions? Okay. In that case, I now wish to move this to a vote, and it is recommended the Committee Grant Planning Commission with the conditions this is Section 8 of this report. All those in favour, please raise your hands. All those against? To draw, I'm going with a recommendation to grant. That application is granted. Thank you very much. And that concludes the application uh, before this evening. Thank you very much to the committee. And thank you very much to the officers. And that concludes our meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> 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 <laughs>